The views expressed on this Turnbuckle Tabloid live stream or Turnbuckle Tabloid podcast episode do not reflect the views, thoughts, or opinions of the RageWorks brand, including the RageWorks podcast network, RageWorks content partners, advertisers, and affiliates. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay, the Red Santee, and just want to let you know that Yes, Oski and I have finally caved in. We've got us up a Patreon. Yes, Turnbuckle Tabloid has a Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid. We've done it. We said, fuck it. If you guys want to be a part of the show a little bit deeper, more in, more in depth, in, in, intense, uh, get more involved in the behind the scenes and be a part of the show in a more intimate and sensuous ways. Why not pay for it? Go to Turnbuckle Tabloid's Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid. You guys can be a part of it. Check out the tiers. Things that might be able to fit your needs when it comes to us here at Turnbuckle Tabloid. So guys, please help us out here. It helps us to build the product, better audio, better apps, better programs, and of course, helps us to build us to be a better podcast, although we're awesome as is but still regardless your 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 contribution your contributions your shillings your 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 bits of change could help us to grow here at turnbuckle tabloid so once again patreon.com forward slash turnbuckle tabloid be a part of the extravaganza and the ridiculous and buffoonery that is turnbuckle tabloid join us on social media and as well as all the podcasting outlets and as always enjoy the show Yo, mother flowers, it's Nick Friendly Gage. And when I'm not out there baking cookies, going to the senior citizens' homes and playing Mahjong, picking flowers for little kids, I'm out there listening to Turnbuckle Tabloid, mother flowers. Turnbuckle Tabloid. Three, two, one. That we do on our time off, honestly. Well, sitting at home, watching you fucking get on your tablet, <laughs> playing retro art and shit. Isn't it amazing though? It's like, it's. I tell you, people like, ask me about what do I do during this COVID time and pandemic. I go the same shit I always fucking do. Yeah. Play video games, find ways to deal with new technology, uh, drink, find ways to deal with new technology, spend drink. time with my daughter, drink. <laughs> Podcast, drink. masturbate, drink, <laughs> watch, watch wrestling, sports. watch sports, drink, drink. masturbate again. It, it, it becomes Eat like tacos, a f- drink. It becomes like a whole like well, oh, in work. I, I did have to find a way to put yeah, work in. Yeah, you work out of being there somehow, right? But there's always like a, a, a tangible when it comes to the video games and stuff. And mind you, I do all this shit when it comes to finding out about how to play retro games and shit. Yes, and how to even play them. I just want them. I, I just, just want to have them. Have them. Uh, Hank Flanders, uh, Flan- sorry, Frank Flanagan <laughs> stopped in uh, this week, and we were talking video games. And yep. he-, he was talking about how he um he wants to c- start collecting old consoles and stuff like that. Retro. I said, dude, and VGNY, brother. And I said, VGNY. it's bad, man. I said, before I knew it, I have nine fucking consoles, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah, I didn't yeah. even fucking realize it. Um, so- so what consoles do you own right now, like in your possession, retro wise? Uh, three sixty. Um, uh, what I have the um, sixty four Nintendo sixty four. Yeah, the Genesis Dreamcast. Do you? Uh, yeah, I have a Dreamcast. Um, nice. What's the other? A Wii. I have uh, the classic SNES. Uh, what else I have? Uh, what else I have? Uh, I have a classic PS one. I have the, the PS one classic. Good, 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 good. Um. Shit, uh, I have a Game Boy around there. I have, I, I do have a Game Boy. From the regular Game Boy or Color? 
the Game Boy Color. Whew. One of my favorites. Uh, One of my favorites. I, you you, you got to get the Game Boy SP. And then any, anything, but, but, else, anything else? I have, I have the Switch. I have the PS4. I have the uh, Xbox One. I, the usual. The usual. What else do I have up there? Yeah, it's pretty much... I have all that shit up there. I got, I got the, the, the retro, the, the retro universe. But it's, it, it's addicting because not only it's nostalgia, but... It it, it it maybe for me it takes a it gives me a break from the high induced graphics the fucking difficulty of things and just lay back and play some uh, Mario. Well, the next thing that, the next one shit. I said that I was I was thinking about getting is the um, the 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 GameCube. Whew, one of my favorite. I have a GameCube. That's one of my favorite. Because I've never had it. I've never had a GameCube. It's amazing. The controller sucks, but um, yeah, the controller is just annoying. But uh, but uh, my friends that. My boy's actually downloading the GameCube emulator and the Wii. The Dolphin? The Dolphin. The well, Dolphin. Uh, well, Retro Arc also has GameCube. But yeah, yeah, but that's what it's called. They're usually yeah. emulators called. The one that yeah. I know of is called Dolphin. Which, I have a GameCube, so I wouldn't really need it, but... Uh, I just love it because of... my um, favorites. Pokemon um, Coliseum is like one of the best games right. in GameCube history. So, I mean, you know, Mario Sunshine. Yeah, Hank was asking me, he says, what games do you want to play for? I said, the ones I really, really want to play is the Day of Reckoning, WWE. Whew, you, ever, you never played those, right? No. They are possibly one of the greatest wrestling games I've ever played. Uh, Red Reckoning 2. That one, um, uh, like I said, the Pokemon series. Fire Pro was actually on there as well, yep. and it was really good on there as well. There's an Animal Crossing on there. The Animal Crossing. Uh, what's another good GameCube game? Zelda. Zelda, of course, the Wind Waker's on there. Yeah, um, it's 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 also indestructible. That shit is fu- that shit is like a fucking uh, it's like a a black box in an airplane. Them shits is strong as hell. Well, I remember man. Leroy Green used it as, as before the Switch. So. <laughs> exactly, yeah. that, that that thing was uh, basically made of like titanium and uh, kryptonite or some yeah, shit. Yeah, like no, this. it's 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 a it's, it's a lunchbox. You have fi- uh, I'm looking at games right now that I've played uh, that I could suggest to you. Uh, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess is one of the greatest Legend of Zelda games out there. Resident Evil 4 is on the GameCube. Right. Metroid Prime. The best Paper Mario, which is Paper Mario the um, the Thousand Year Door, mm. was amazing. Mario Kart Double Dash, the best Mario Kart period. I don't care what nobody tells me. Because, you know, in that game, you have a partner with you. It's not just you by yourself. It's right. you and, like, like Donkey Kong and Diddy, or you could choose and mix and match and stuff. Mm. GameCube was probably, in my opinion, the best era for Nintendo. Like, my, for me, me living. Like, you know, and of course... Previous it was better, but right. I, I enjoyed GameCube the most. Not really a '64 guy, not really. I uh, like I said with, with the '64 after after Nintendo, the original NES, I drifted away from Nintendo for a long time. Yeah, long time. I, I got into Genesis, then I got into PlayStation. I stayed away from Nintendo for a long time. Then uh, as I got older, I said, let me catch up, catch up, and grab the stuff I didn't get to play. And, yep. and now and now that's my um. My my long walk back home, I guess. Yeah, which which by the way, I hope you know, if you have a Wii, you could play GameCube games. I know, I know, and it's you just need to buy the discs, <laughs> or or I mean, I don't know if the e, I don't know if the shop's still on. No, the Wii. no, it's closed. It's dead. Yeah, uh, yeah. You probably have to just go buy on VGNY some GameCube games. Yeah, and you just put it in the disc. I'm gonna try that out, but uh, yeah, and I, I was also thinking about um, with the with the games, I was thinking about what's going on this week. This week we have. Leading up to uh, God. Halloween, yeah, Halloween, Halloween. I'm not a Halloween guy. Uh, um, I'm not a lot guy. There's a yeah, lot of shit I don't like to fucking yeah. do. Uh, what's your Fuck. favorite holiday? Monday, Sun, Fridays, <laughs> weekends, <laughs> right? Weekends. <laughs> weekends. Um, <laughs> I like New Year's because I like a new beginning. I like yeah. the the idea of starting fresh, especially with this fucking yeah, year. Yeah, well, this is well. Shit, I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that we're all going out and getting. <laughs> Uh, Shit face Yeah I mean Yeah I gotta put in for that day Because uh, at work it, It's actually falling perfectly Because good, good. since They're both on uh, Friday Christmas and New Year's Day Is on Friday Okay that's pretty So I'm okay. off that weekend of Christmas Right And then New Year's Eve I can put in as a required day off Yeah So I can be good for that So and I gotta so I gotta start putting that in now And you can treat yourself And, and if I don't get it I'm fuck it I'm calling out it Yeah I mean right. it Doesn't fucking matter I feel, I feel like most of the time When you tell me You're gonna try to put a day in You call out it Regardless of the situation yeah, I don't like, give a yeah, shit fuck But it. it helps to get the Yeah the, I like to say Hey at least I tried right? I yeah, tried you tried But now I'm gonna force my hand Fuck you Yeah fuck you <laughs> I remember you. one time You tried calling out at work And they didn't answer You're like there's no way They're not answering right now You were tight Yeah I remember When they did that shit one year I was like Are you fucking serious? I was like, oh well, listen, I got the call record saying I called, so what the fuck. <laughs> but yeah, as for Halloween, like I, I, I as not even as a kid, I was really into it. Uh, I really wasn't into getting dressed up. And I remember one year as I got older, uh, my, like my teenage years, I tried to do that. Uh, 
that Two Face where I did paint half my right, face, and, right? And I was like, hey, "Fuck this! <laughs> what, the, what the fuck am I doing? What's the point what am of I doing? This? Yeah, what, what am I doing? I mean, you're, you're a Halloween guy. It was uh, for a few years as a, as a kid. I just think it's died now. I don't think it's as fun as it used to be. I, I think it's I think it's died uh, for the past how many years? Even before COVID, it's just uh, you do not see as many trick or treaters. You're not getting dressed up this year. I want to. I just don't know what. I'm, I'm, I was gonna go to Spirit Halloween actually and buy. Uh, uh, I'm, 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 I actually might wear my alien onesie, yeah. but like that's cheaping it out. So I might go to Spirit Halloween and like see what they got because there's um there's they, a store that we the were, office stuff. I want to be Kevin Malone. We were <laughs> like with the bald spot and the chili and shit like that. Maybe we were at a we were at a spot recently. It's um um House of Holidays. It's on it's in on Atlantic Avenue. Yeah, it's a big fucking store. Like the first. Floor is nothing but a Halloween, and you go upstairs, yep. there's more Halloween, but like and the it's higher even bigger. Easter. No, I'm kidding. No, <laughs> right? It'd be the fucking Kwanzaa, and fucking uh, Rosh Hashanah. Finally, the roof is Christmas, right? <laughs> no, but at the second floor is like mostly ha- mostly Halloween. No, no, it's partially Halloween, and the rest opens up into Christmas. It's almost like uh, you just walked into the fucking North Pole. I love the yield Christmas store. Oh my uh, god, I was I was like shit. This I is love, amazing. I but they that. actually had some cool shit there. Of course, yeah. I might go check that out. Like, uh, who, who would you want to be for Halloween this year? Um, and don't say yourself. Don't you? I feel like you're Jim in the office. Like, you don't want to dress up. I'll be, I'll be Bob. Facebook. Uh, we'll put book on my forehead. And it'll be Facebook. Come on, man. You were, you were Dean Ambrose a few years ago. I was not Dean Ambrose. I Isaac was actually, myself. Isaac actually just posted the picture. Bro, you had the hands taped up. You had the whole nine. No, side. I wasn't. I was hurt that day. I had my hand, I was I was hurt. I had wow. something, something happened at work. Wow, that's I, crazy, man. And I didn't want to. Um, oh, so you, you, you magically had a Dean Ambrose shirt, jeans, um, re- taped up hands. I was going to a wrestling show, so I was wearing a wrestling shirt. So both your hands were fucked up. Yeah, I had a I had an incident at work, so I fucked up my hands and shit. Oh, but, but, but explain the Dean Ambrose buckle belt, the belt buckle. I was at a uh, wrestling show. So you so so you would wear the Dean Ambrose buckle belt to the next show, regardless if it's Halloween or not. Yeah, I put it on. All right, you can say this as much as you want, but I mean, I mean, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I was I'll was, just be real. I was in character and stuff. What are you talking about? Who was Bray White? Weren't Who? you Bray last the year before that? No, I, all right, I was Bray. I ain't gonna lie. Come on, son. Okay, the Come only on, thing son. that I did, okay, I did this because of um, you always got to blame it on children. Sure, so, you know, to hand it down to children. Sure. No, that year we went to. Uh, it was a. Um, they had a Halloween party up in the high local high school over here. Yep, and. The whole family was getting dressed, so sure. I said, like, "Fuck it, I'll don't be a don't be a humbug." No, no, no. I dressed as Bray. Good. I went and got the um, but I yeah, I was Bray with the the Hawaiian shirt good, and good. the beard and the hat and all you that. Should have got shit. like the lantern from the. They got a fucking rash from that beard. This was <laughs> awful. I feel like I'm you, never meant to have facial hair. No, I should never have facial hair. Well, it's I mean, getting the Kratos look. It's all right. Yeah, but other than that, it's just no further I, than that. I've never, I've never gotten to that that that. Conformation of becoming this burly, hairy guy. Like and when I lose hair one way, it grows up in else places. Like, no, I still grow hair like a 12 year old girl. Me too. I shaved my pedo mustache, by the way. Thank God. Uh-huh. Yeah, thank you. It, I mean, it's coming back, but like, you was like, you was looking like a, creep, a creepy French guy in the Riviera or well, some the shit. Thing, here's the thing like, I shaved it because you're right. If it was a full mustache, it wouldn't be a problem. But like the middle, there's no hair growing. Yeah. So it looks like hey, 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 hey. Yeah, like, like, you, like, like you wanted to tw- like wait till it grew in so you could do like the twisty knots yeah, that like, you go uh, at the know, end of it. I don't know it. if I'm going to keep it shaved, but like I just don't like the gap in the middle. It just, it, it look, I feel like I'm dude dastardly from like wacky racers or so something. You got to draw like it like, in. You got to like fill it in or some shit. Like, like the bitches do fill in their Come eyebrows. Come on, Muttley. Come on, Muttley. Which I should, I should. <laughs> <laughs> I love Wacky Racers though. That was a throwback. So. I used to skip, sc- uh, not skip school. I used to call out sick and watch Wacky Wacky Racers. Really? That was on all the fucking time. Uh, boomer. Yeah, but then Cartoon Network came on during dinner, you know, and shit. Like, I love it because they actually, ha- it was actually comp. There was the competitions for Wacky Racers, and there was also one that was called Laugh Olympics. Yeah, where it was the same kind of thing, but except the the, the Hanna Barbera. Cartoon characters were doing Olympic sports. Oh, that's amazing! And, I didn't remember that. And, and didn't they, Grape Ape win everything? Uh, it, no, <laughs> he should have though. Yeah, he was but they huge. actually, they actually wasn't like a route. Like they, these teams were actually competitive and shit. <laughs> so every week it was like, oh, so you could. I, I would love to have done that on drunk night. Yeah, like if you were in college and he's like, dude, we gotta like. Let's bet on whatever And the, yeah. I've seen these episodes 400 times Like so what Let's still bet dude <laughs> Let's still get, do it like, Fucking let's take a shot Every time Fuck Great you know, dies Great uh, Muttley lives <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
or or um, um what's his name um heavens to megatroid Oh shit! I forgot his name. I just, I just real blank. Uh, thank goodness because it shows to show my age. I love the Hanna Barbera characters like uh, um, Monkey, which they yeah, had his a name game. Was, yeah, Monkey. They had a game, but it wasn't that good. Was uh, they actually had a Hanna Barbera game? They, I guess yeah, they it was. Did, it, was, know, it, was it was wacky races, but it wasn't that good. Oh, uh, they could they could make it work now with a Mario Kart kind of vibe and make it like I would buy it. Yeah, uh, I would buy that shit. Hell yeah, uh, Wacky Racers is a, it was an wacky amazing concept. Uh, so other than that, everybody, welcome everybody to another episode of. Turnbuckle Tabloid I am your host Mr. Ear to the Mat The king of talk style And as always The cheap thrill Jay the Red Santa And I am The Mook With the mic I am Mefam Abbey Make sure you check us out On all social media outlets Check us out on the Like group page On Facebook At 749 On the group page Creeping on 750 It's Right at the precipice of 750. And you guys are right there. The and precipice. The precipice. And I always tell people, I said, I said I, you, you would think that you have more people in your group. And I go, no, it's because I don't fucking suck dick for us, everybody in the group. You don't kiss ass, man. People come I'm in, confused. they come in. That's I refuse cool. to kiss ass. Yeah, so uh, make sure you check us out on the group page and the like and group page on Facebook. Also, make sure you check us out on the Instagram at Turnbuckle Tabloid Podcast, as well as on Twitter at Turnbuckle Tab. And be sure you check us out on Anchor and as well as on our Get Vocal and YouTube at Turnbuckle Tabloid. Also, be sure you check out our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid. You guys can be a part of the show. Buy in, get into some stuff, get some merch. You can be part of the show. You can be doing merch. things, do some things. Uh, play your music here as well. We'll play your music if you're an up and coming artist and such. You can do that there as well. Yes, so make sir. sure you check us out at patreon.com forward slash turnbuckle tabloid. Also, make sure you reach out to us on all our um, other outlets like rageworks.net and rageworks network.com that's where the family is at we got Hell all the yeah. shows all the reviews all the previews all the TV shows the comic books the movies it's all there ladies and gentlemen that's it's our all hometown, you. there that's you our hometown the, you you get the podcast and such the return of Call Me When It's Over they're they're back Ooh. they're back into the fold ladies and gentlemen all right. after a nice vacation sabbatical they're back in the fold also you check out Black is the New Black to, um, Toys and Text Trek Untold and of course you get us at Turnbuckle Tablet so make sure you check us out on all those outlets as well and as new, well new as podcast coming soon and a new one coming soon coming soon ladies wink, and gentlemen wink wink nudge I actually nudge made the announcement on the Instagram page so thank I, you I, please I, I made the announcement let's get it going already sir I, I made the announcement because I cannot wait on people no more um I, 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 of course, the episode's going to still be recorded and all that stuff, working, whatever. But I didn't announce that the Funko Hub podcast is coming soon. So. Thank you, sir. Of and course. also make sure you check us out on all the podcasting outlets, Spotify, Google Play, iHeartRadio, uh, Amazon Music, uh, Podbean. It's, it's everywhere. And for all you people, we've been tracking. You guys have been listening from across the globe, India, Belgium, France, England, to all our international listeners, thank you for partaking and downloading. We have a big announcement for you guys, not only overseas, but here in the States as well, who listen to us at Turnbuckle Tabloid. Hell yeah. So, we here at Turnbuckle Tabloid has come have come to the conclusion that, yes, our shows run as long as the Ten Commandments. Which is not okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost as though you're watching uh, Saving Private Ryan every week. That's yeah. how fucking long this, it's, this, it's long, this show man. is. So, uh, Oski and I, has come. we have come to the conclusion to where we, we are going to break up the episodes. Wow. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Each week we will be breaking up said episode. Uh, Sundays will be the first release, and Wednesdays will be the following part two. Yes. So most likely Sundays will be around the square circle and wrestling rundown, and the Wednesday will be cutting a promo and any interviews and such that we have. So what made you make this decision? Because uh, we want to give the fans a little explanation. I was mean, having a conversation with uh, two individuals the other day. Uh, Hank Flanagan was in here, like I mentioned earlier, and also a friend of the show who will be on here in one sec, uh, Jim Fix, aka Fillmore from the Quite Frankly Howard Stern podcast, whose shows run actually long as well. They do about two and a half, three hours episodes as well a week. It's long, man. It's and, long. Um, and when, when when speaking to Hank, Hank said, yeah, the, the show's great. He just said it's too long. And I go, yeah, I was thinking about it, cutting it down. I said, maybe doing uh, split shows. I also see Cornette does his two shows. I see um, Jericho does his two shows. 
a week. It's appealing. Such. It's more appealing. I yeah, feel. and it's more appealing to the ears. And plus, with the way that I've been tracking now, how the audience is growing week by week, and I could see it visually, and um, basically put a finger on the pulse. It's like maybe if we split the shows that way, it'll grow the audience and the downloads and streams easier. So, and also it gives people um, a chance to to pick what they like. Right. They and want, uh, if they want just an interview. Go to part two. Yeah. They want other shit. Come to part one. Yeah, and, I'm saying, and I think it also will be something. Although we hate YouTube, we don't really give a fuck about that. I do think we should be clipping the interviews and and, and wrestling rundown more because you know Jim Cornette's main bread and butter is those clips of those the clips rest of the news. So I figure that we'll we'll split out those um split up the episodes and see how it works that way. Uh, if the numbers look right, we'll keep it that way. If not, well, I guess you guys like to hear us like we're fucking. We're, like reading the Iliad or some shit like that. Right. Like if we fucking reading War and Peace every week, whatever. <laughs> but other than that, yes, we do it for you guys and we do it for ourselves too because I think it also is going to be easier to handle when it comes to um, to Rich having to deal with the production and editing and stuff. And also, I'm, who, I, I'm also in the works to um, be buy... I'm, <laughs> this is OD, but um, I think it's necessary um, because, you know, sometimes a lot of people could be in here and they could be interrupting and stuff. Um, I'm thinking of investing in an on-air LED sign. An on-air LED, really? I'm thinking about buying it. If we could plug it into USB and we could put it like over <laughs> here or something, so whenever we're, like we're live, the red light it, it could turn on the on-air that we're on air. What do you think about that? You think <laughs> that would air? actually be pretty fucking funny. Yeah, you could put it on. We, of course, you don't want it up all the time, so it could be put up and down when we when we record and stuff. Or just hit the button. I was thinking. Um, I was thinking about Amazon has a few of them. So I'm thinking, what do you think about that? That <laughs> yeah. actually would be, I'd, I'd actually be pretty funny. I think it would be cool to have. It'd be. Uh, and plus, it'd be cool for Facebook Live for the viewers and shit. It'll make it look a little uh, legit. I should do. I should. I should hang when it says my mother is visually impaired. I should have it like in her room, <laughs> and when she's opening the door, she touches the doorknob and it buzzes. Yeah, like, it, buzzes. it buzzes her hand. Yeah, and says, yeah, yeah. "Oh, they're they're recording right oh, now." Oh shit! Oh shit! They're recording right now. <laughs> <laughs> that would be. All. Oh, the tech, tech, ladies and gentlemen, tech. I'm telling you, we will, we, we'll, um, we'll make it happen. Listen. Week by week, we're finally getting into the fold, I guess. Um, excuse me. Excuse me, Red. Uh, are you going to let me respond to that? Oh, please. Uh, excuse Do me. so, sir. Uh, excuse me. Um, Mr. Biden, uh, Mr. Biden really, really didn't let me speak, and it's not fair. Oh God! You know, I know we were going to transition to that. I'm, yeah. and I, I'm, I'm just going to do it quick because we're we're about a week away. Opening um, the polls are opening up as we speak. Vote. People out there voting uh, on their online now. We have Trump people voted who, today. Who, who, yeah, he voted for some guy named Trump. <laughs> wow, how witty was that, dickhead? <laughs> crickets, crickets, crickets. I'm so, I'm so. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I mentioned it on my on my personal Facebook page the other day. I said I'm so done with this shit. I would just want to get back to fucking fart jokes and, and fucking dick references. Facts, I'm so facts. I'm over it. I'm done with it. I'm over. But you but know, the debate was this past week. The debate was this past week. It was it was it was moderated well this time. Yes, I know that fucking pissed. Um, it pissed Trump off because he, he was redder than a tomato in the first question. But not only that, it was a woman who was moderating him and controlled yep. his shit. Yep. So I know he was pissed at that. Yep. Yep. Also, we had um. You know the, the 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 mics were were being cut off. Yes. Which you know they it didn't seem to be needed this time around. Because there was seemed, uh, Trump inter- interrupted a lot though. Yeah, still. but it was but still as bad. It wasn't as bad. Excuse and, me, excuse me. I have to I have to react to that, right? <laughs> I, I hate. It. I love when he when he said that shit. I was like this motherfucker. Every Tell me when he does that hand signal. Excuse shit. me, excuse me, miss. I have to respond. To I that, have to right? respond, right? Uh, <laughs> no, you don't. You don't. Next question. That's why I, I love when she when she said Biden. Do you want to respond? No. And he, but most of the time he was like, No. Just go to the next question. Thank the you. one the one thing that that I said that Biden should have said loud and and clear so everyone could have could hear is when. Uh, Trump asked him about, well, why didn't you get it done during your terms? Why didn't you get it done during your terms? Why didn't you get it done during the terms? And it's because the GOP didn't allow us to do it. That's he said, he why. Said once we could have emphasized that more. Yeah, he could. He just said it quickly, and I'm like, "Fuck! You should have said it earlier, you fucking ass." It's a Republican court, and then it went completely non. It went dead silent for ten seconds. <laughs> it's funny because Kevin Nash actually. Um, it's funny because Nash. I don't understand. I, 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 I always think that belief. he's. I always swing that he's. I always feel that he's right, but then he swings left sometimes, yeah. which I respect because that's the Both way that ways. I look at shit. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I don't, like I said, I don't. I'm right down the middle. I'm not left. I'm not right. I don't give a fuck about any of these fucking sides. Right, they could go right. all fuck themselves. Right. But you know, when right is right and fair is fair, call it down the fucking middle. Yep. And he made a mention, and he goes, "Okay, Trump, you talk about all the all these um these proposals and such that uh." 
what, what was supposed to happen. Where is it? We're four years in, and also uh, GOP Senate. You've had the all. You had the Senate for ten years. Where, Where's the progression at? Nothing. Oh, and shout out to Fifty Cent. Oh wow! Shout yeah, out to 50. I want your reaction on that one. Shout out to Fifty. Uh, Fifty, you you pretty much is an asshole day one. <laughs> I wouldn't even be surprised if you're not trolling now because I think you would probably would be trolling <laughs> about the fact that because you leave the country. You're a Black Lives Matter kind of doing all this shit right now, but all of a sudden you listen to Biden say something about the tax, the next tax reform, and you're like, oh fuck that, I'm voting Trump, and it goes. Dude, nothing pa- no bill fucking passes these yeah, days, bro. Like nothing. what what are you worried about? Taking off um you mad you rich? Like uh Get rich or die trying, right? So what a dick, really. And then he said he just threatened to leave the country. Goodbye. And once again, like, oh you fucking mooks. Like my uh, man Curly Bill from Tombstone. Well. Bye. Bye. <laughs> it's like, it, dude, let's let's be for real here. You have you 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 reap the benefits of the country when you were poor. Living in Queens And you know Your family was struggling You reap those benefits Now it's your time To trickle it down To other people And you know what I get it I may May not ever see The money that you see right now I may never have that thing But I would like to believe That I still have The social conscience To say That once I make it To a certain level Of, of wealth Or 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 my finances are or, or Or good enough To where I can give back I will give back Yeah You know And that's just what it is I why is it that us lower and middle class individuals pay the highest taxes and you fuckers don't pay shit? Exactly. That's you're the making main focal ten point. you make ten, twelve million a year. And they're gonna fucking take five hundred thousand to a million dollars out of your fucking pocket. That doesn't even make a dent for anything that you do unless you're fu- and a lot That's of your these, chump change. Yeah, and a lot of these people, like the Adam Sandlers, the um the 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 um even the Chris Rocks, the the all these big time Hollywood celebrities They don't fucking care They don't give a fuck They don't They do what they gotta do They do what they gotta do And that's it You whine like a bitch Yeah Whatever And all that shit Becomes a tax write off Anyway Yep It all comes back to you Anyway So So I don't know What what the fuss is about The more that you The taxes you pay Is high Give the fucking charity It comes back to you anyway yep. So it doesn't even fucking matter But shout out to 50 I know he's trolling the shit out of people So um, whatever <laughs> If he's not Other than we that have have a conversation. Fucking, uh, Like I said this week ladies and gentlemen The show's be split into two But still give you the rundown on what's going on this week This week ladies and gentlemen I wanted to talk I wanted to do something But I think I'm gonna uh, For cutting a promo I think I think we're gonna change it I think okay. we're gonna, we, had the, we had a discussion But I think Roll the, the other punches, discussion, baby I think the better discussion would be is it the death of a true wrestling main eventer? Is it over? The icons, the 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 faces on the marquee, the the big time wrestlers that are recognized not only for wrestling but anywhere. We had the Hulk Hogan's, the Ric Flair's, we had the Stone Cold's, the Rocks. I believe it was on Eric Bischoff's show where he mentioned that John Cena will be the last of the iconic wrestler. It's very possible. The, the mark. So uh, that'll be a discussion that we have for cutting a promo this week. Also this week he have on wrestling rundown. We have uh, well, wrestling news. I, I mean, I have news. I just don't have it in front of me right now, but uh, of course uh, the- it's, 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 it's pretty interesting. I mean, we get, we got to talk about um, supposedly Vince McMahon has been banning, unbanning a few moves recently. We got to talk about, um, Oh, yeah. the reason, the reason why that WWE blocked, Wrestlers from doing stuff like Twitch and cameos because they're, they're starting new. their own shit. Starting their own shit as 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 as, as, as predicted. Yeah. Um, we, we we have to talk about uh, COVID outbreak once again. We have Joey Janela not being at All Elite this week, as well as uh, Dean Ambrose was not there as well, who was also at the uh, at a GCW collective yeah, event I wonder as well. Why. Hmm. So uh, we and, have um, that. Teddy Hart's arrested again, but we'll uh, talk about that later. We'll talk about that. And also around the square circle, we have predictions for Hell in a Cell. As well as what the hell happened this week, especially with Yikers. Probably the worst, in my opinion, and probably Oski's opinion, the worst fucking segment yeah, I've ever seen in wrestling. History. But once again, the naysayers will say different. We'll discuss that as well. And as always, we have our monthly visit. No, it's not the time of the month where I put on my fucking tampon on my Kotex. No, yeah. no, no. This week. We have our guy, Hank Flanagan, stopping in for Hank's happy hour. You don't want to miss it. This week. Um, as much as you guys who listen to the show know Hank's beliefs and such like that, 
it's pretty it's pretty interesting the conversation we have. Hank is probably one of the only guys that I know who swings a bit to the right, who you can actually have a a, a solid conversation with and have your, an open forum without having resentful and don't want to make friends with him anymore. I respect that. So guys, don't go anywhere. Stick around. We turn. Oh, and like we mentioned before, on the Patreon, you guys, if you are an up and coming artist, and you can do that on us. So Patreon.com for us at Terminal Tabloid. Here's a an individual who been a long time listener for the show and has paid a, a, a small amount for uh, uh, sharing of their sexy salsa is on so what? Uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll play some of that sexy salsa soothing music so don't go anywhere guys stick around we will return thank you guys in a sec hey guys if you are an up and coming artist and you want to share your talents with the world you know, here at Terminal Tablo, we love playing people's music. We do it for anyone who has talent and is aspired to just share their love for music and their passion here at Terminal Tablo. Although we're a wrestling show, we do enjoy our music. Oski and I are aficionados and connoisseurs of good music. So, if you want to play your music on Terminal Tabloid, Make sure you check us out at Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid and you just check out our tiers and just give us some love and we'll show you love by playing your music to the masses who listen to us here at our little goofy podcast. So if you're a big musician and you just want to share it to the masses, check out our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid and um one hand washes the other and we'll make sure that people hear your talents when you told me that you hated my friends don't give a fuck cause you don't hang with them And every time you told me my opinion was wrong It made me think about writing this fuck you song And I hope you're doing well right now But to be honest I don't really give a fuck who cares about you You still hit my phone up And bitch I'll be moving on and I throw my middle finger in the air So hold that, baby, you should know that My mama still likes you but hates what you have done And you never like to admit when you were wrong But you got so caught up with your job Didn't see what's going on But now you know Your ass is sleeping all alone So if you like the way you look so much oh baby you can go and fuck yourself and if you think that i really give a fuck oh baby you can go and fuck yourself Fuck you, 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 fuck you Fuck you, 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 fuck you. For every time you said my dick was small, it might be cause your pussy has no walls. I'm such an ass cause you made me so vulnerable. For all those times I let you bust my balls. So if you like the way you look so much, oh baby, you can go and fuck yourself. And if you think that I really give a fuck, oh baby, you can go and fuck yourself. So if you like the way you look so much, oh baby, you can go and fuck yourself. And if you think you think that I that really I give a fuck, whoa, oh baby, whoa, you can whoa. go and fuck yourself. Yo, 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 brah, Notorious One and Seven is here. LEX, OGs, 5150, the Latin Frank White. 
and you're listening to Turnbuckle Tabloid. Yo, yo, yo. This is Loki. Don't call me Cabal, because if you do, I will kick you in the vertebrae and break four of your ribs. And when I'm not cutting a promo, being angry, miserable, or displeased, or kicking someone in the back of the head because they didn't say hi to me during catering, I'm listening to Turnbuckle Tabloid with Jay the Red Santi and Olski. Like, share, and subscribe. And if you don't, I will jump off the top rope and give you the warrior's way and cave your chest in. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of Turnbuckle Tabloid. This is Wrestling Rundown. Wow, this is actually a week of wrestling that we don't really have much news. Shit, like slow week in the news world. Wow, yeah, some weeks, some weeks it's a hit or miss. It's, it is what it is. What can you say? Oh wow, well. can't hit a home Better for us, week. I guess. Yeah, we got yeah, got things to do. So I mean, yeah, right. It's okay. Hit, sometimes we hit a home. Big runs. Ten football comes back tonight, so I want. I need to watch some Big Ten football. All right, Michigan, some. let's go, Michigan. Let's go, Maze, Blue and Maze. Get some Big Ten tonight, boy. And also got a UFC. Got a, Oh, come watching, back tonight. I'll be watching UFC, and then I'm gonna watch the South Park, um, South Park uh, pandemic special. Oh, you haven't seen it yet? Nah. Uh, nah. I'm gonna watch it on the Fire Stick. Oh, okay. But um, yeah, like slow week with the news, which is okay. You know, I'm not mad at it. We can't control that sort of thing. <laughs> so um, yeah, no, we'll make our own news next time. Just to, we'll we'll just bullshit. We do like kayfabe news and shit. Yeah, like we'll something. be like fucking ringside news, you fucking phonies. As anyway. always, I am the Howard Stern of this segment to my Robin Ophelia Quivers Oski. So Oski, take it away. The first piece of news we have this week is that WWE is officially hosting mandatory relationship counseling. For wrestlers, yes, that is true. WWE, the t- fuck? WWE is taking a step to ensure their wrestlers keep healthy relationships in the person in their personal lives after the speaking out movement earlier this year. The meetings are a way to push the change of culture in wrestling, uh, and it, they will be mandatory for all talent on that subject. The first meeting will be taking place on October twenty eighth. And um, also, there also will be sessions available for individual wrestlers to ask questions in smaller breakout groups. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, let's do all this. Let's do the drug prevention. Let's do uh, other mandates and other healthy exercises to ensure that our wrestlers keep not only uh, physically well, but mentally and emotionally well. By the way, we still don't give you our fucking health insurance. Out of everything, they still don't give no, me health insurance. No, we're, not, we're still not looking out for health insurance. No. What are your thoughts on the idea of 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 bringing these relationship couples together to make it not controversial during their possible breakups? They'll be divorced. <laughs> like a, they'll be divorced in a, or broken up in a year. Yeah, ser- uh, seriously. But all 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 couples, married or not, have to have to go to these this thing, man. I think it's. Is it? Um, this is my tag team partner for life. Yeah, I'd be really annoyed if I was like Charlotte and Andrade. I'd be like, "What the fuck?" Yo, bro? I want to see two gay wrestlers go to this thing and yeah. everybody look at each other like, "Yeah, fuck it." Yeah, fuck it. Oh, oh shit, shit. Word? Okay, I didn't know that. All right, good for you guys. Do you think it's a breach of privacy? Going okay. Well, now because they're speaking out, we're gonna have to go into your personal lives and dive into why there's a problem. Uh, the, uh, I, 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 or, is know, it a, or is it a safe move? I wonder if WWE. Ha- Ask the, their wrestlers to disclose their relationships to them, like the, you know, like when you're a police officer and you're in um, uh, other forms of business that they have to disclose that yes, uh, we're married or stuff like that, or we're in a relationship. I don't know. I wonder if WWE forces that. Weird. As well. yeah, I don't know. I might have to find that out one time. But, but you think it's a good idea at the end? I don't. I think I think it's a, I think it's an airbag when it's not needed. 
Yeah, exactly. It's uh, I don't know. I, I, it's just a waste of fucking money, I guess. Oh, shut your mouth, you thong wearing fatty. Joey Ryan continues to file lawsuits as he has filed another defam. Get on a Joey Ryan dick suing train. Yeah. Last month he filed a defamation lawsuit against the speaking out accusers, and then a lawsuit against Impact Wrestling over a breach of contract. Well, I hate to break the news to you, but there's a brand new lawsuit that he's filed, and it's um. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> the lawsuit is similar to the other suits he recently filed, but um, it's about people attacking him on social media. Right? Oh, boo hoo! Well, um, listen, I spoke to a re- I spoke to a, uh, a listener to the show, and their opinion is, well, if Joey Ryan's going as hard to do lawsuits, maybe he is innocent. What, what do you? What, uh, I don't think so. I think this is him saving his ass. R- what do you think about Joey Ryan? It's the go- OJ shit. OJ, OJ was OJ was found innocent. And yet he's still doing the tour, talking about, well, I, I, I didn't kill her, but if I did, mm-hmm. no, it's, it, it's listen, it's, it's other ways to just try, try to cover their own ass, or to say that you know, um, look, I, 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 if I didn't do it, then why am I going so hard? That's why you're going hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh, why. It's uh. He's trying to make he. It's um. It's cutting him off at the pass. It's like a chess move. It's like just be just so that you just before you start to sue me, I'll sue you first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. See, so then this is a, this is a. See, you think, you think this the is a smart move mechanism. was going after the smart move was going after impact first because with the impact it kind of uh, was a breach of contract. Right, and also. You get the money from them, the hush money, it pays for your lawyers for anybody else. Facts. So you just you get to knock that out. Right. And everybody else will be, okay, listen, he just got this impact money. Depending on how many people it was, you go, listen, just so you don't say shit anymore, take this and that's it. We don't wait. And he'll go, it'll go away, and he'll be back in wrestling probably three or four years from now. It's pretty oh, much it. no. You think he's going to be back in wrestling again? Oh, yeah, please. It'll be, it'll be clean cut. He'll be back in wrestling three, four years. If not in a, in a in a form where he's wrestling, but in a form of maybe he's back with um bar wrestling or uh, that kind of shit. Oh, God, help us all. Because this man is a fucking embarrassment. Why, look at what we have here, folks! Joey Janela has been pulled this past week from AEW Dynamite after being exposed to someone who tested positive for COVID-19. And, uh... John Moxley is one of them as well. Uh, he was at that show. We all know. We talked about it last week and probably our highlight moment of wrestling rundown all time. Uh, Ole Wrestling announced that Joey Janela has been pulled and will be pulled until further notice because he has was exposed to someone who tested positive for COVID-19 at the GCW event. Once again, thank you, GCW, for being not only not safe but being fucking morons. Um... And John Moxley supposedly on that list as well. Red, what do you think about um? My question isn't what do you think about GCW because we already talked about that. I'm gonna change the question here. Do you think it's do you think it's smart that AEW it um stops making their wrestlers go elsewhere uh, as a safety precaution? For because now, AEW is known for putting a lot of their talent out in the indies and, and giving them work. But do you think as of right now it's the safe move to just say just be exclusive with us, man? For, for now. now, yes. I think it would be smarter. I think it's 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 better. You know, it's like, it's like saying, look, guys, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to take money out your mouth. But as of right now, you're hurting our business by doing that. And everybody will go, well, you know, they could do the same thing with injuries. Yeah, you're right. It is. But right now, if a person gets injured, that's one person getting injured. If you're getting this COVID shit, everybody's getting fucking COVID shit. So, right. You know, just just for now, just pull them back. Just pull pull back a little bit. I agree. I agree, hundred percent. You're fired. <laughs> this is a funny story, and this is not really something I want to like. This is not a discussion, but I just found this funny. Arn Anderson thinks that David Otunga was kept on WWE payroll because Vince hoped to get Jennifer Hudson to sing at WrestleMania. Don't lie, though. I I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. <laughs> Do you agree with I that? I wholeheartedly agree with that. <laughs> like, wow! I just on read some that. real shit, I'm like, yup. Because I can why, see that. Because for the longest we've seen him just lying in the back. Uh, why? Uh, and I guess that might be the fucking um, that might be the reason. I mean, okay. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm sorry. I know it's not news, but I, I had. It's hilarious though. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. Uh, I'm not gonna. Do we have to talk about Laura Sullivan's name change? Uh, what is it? The freak. I am the best in the world at what I do. <laughs> Leo Rush 
is back into professional wrestling, and he made a list of wrestlers he wants to face. Oh, God. Everybody has this fucking list now. Absolutely. And some of these... Fuck you, Cody. It is your fault. It is Cody's fault. And uh, just to name a few notable names on this list, let's go through it. He has Blake Christian on that list. He has Brian Pillman Jr. Calvin Tankman, a good friend of the show. Uh, Cody, of course. Chris Jericho. Darby Allin. Basically, uh, AEW. Um, <laughs> Moxley, Jungle Boy, Kota Ibushi, Casey Navarro, Lee Moriarty, which I told you is an upcoming star, Myron Reed, Orange Cassidy, Sonny Kiss is on that list, Trey Miguel, Trey Lamar, um, just to name a few. A lot of those guys, you could go fucking wrestle at uh, VXS. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> you don't have to go far, buddy. Which isn't a bad thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was like, you don't have to go far, buddy. I might not be here, but I'll make sure that this place is always my home until the next show because I'm going to need a check, and I just have just found out that I'm going to be a father again. So, yeah, I'm going to need another check, guys. Basically. so uh, And my album mm, didn't do so well. What do you think about about Leo Rush's return to wrestling? Do you think it is a money thing, or do you think he truly loves the business? I think the kid got psych issues. I really do. I mean, that, that, that has been I a do. conversation of thought. And it, it will come out to say that he's a manic depressive some shit. I guarantee he's coming down the lane. I, and he's going to blame WWE for it. I'm telling you. Really? It's coming down the lane. Wow. Okay. It is. And, and, and it's a young man. And you, you got burned by a promotion. I get it. You know, it's fucked up. But you know what? Uh, there's two ends of that spectrum that could occur. A, you had a hand in it, which you didn't deny, and your, your, your arrogance. And B, maybe it wasn't your time there. It happens. But uh, you know what, what? What? What can you do? You fucking dust off and you start again. Yeah, yeah, you do. But, you, you you start. But off. I want to be. I you know I want to start my music career. Why not do both? You can do both. Yeah, NBA. Damian Lillard. Ever heard of him? He yeah. does both. Yeah. yeah. But you know what do I know? But yes, I I really do believe that he's gonna come out and say that he has some issues. And um, yeah, those guys on the list is those are not impossible matches. And the AEW guys is just you saying, I want to get it to AEW. Shh. Yeah, basically. Just when they think they got the answers, I change the questions. Brock Lesnar is back. In UFC, sort of. (laughs) It has been announced that Brock Lesnar is the newest DLC pack for UFC 4, and rumors are running rampant. After this deal, people are thinking Brock Lesnar is taking the hike to UFC for a couple of more fights to end his athletic career. Uh, why people are saying this? I'll give you a few fact checks. Paul Heyman's with Roman Reigns. Check. Brock Lesnar called UFC his home in that UFC DLC commercial. Check. And the fact that he's even in the video game in any... Which, by the way, he looks terrible. The graphics are awful. Um, people think Brock might be going to UFC to finish his athletic career. Right? What do you think? Smart move. He could wrestle to him for... Like, he could, he could WWE for another five years if he wants. He doesn't fucking come out anyway. So he wrestled wrestle there for another five years. Also, but do you think it's the right move to end? Is, do you think it's the right place to end your in ring? I mean, in, in general, career on? Um, no, because he could have took the check again with the WWE and been like, "Nah, fuck no, this." No, but but you know what? You're, they're begging for him because that 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 heavyweight, um, that 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 heavyweight lineup in UFC it needs help after you know Cormier about to be going out soon. Uh, uh, Steel uh, Steel Pick is basically the the face there now. There's not really much guys there in that division to get him to do one more run in there can help. But uh, I don't know. I, I it's, Brock is gonna do what Brock wants to do. It's, it's just that's just face the facts. Yep, we'll see the future of Brock Lesnar soon. I'll fight him. Chris Jericho was on his podcast this week, and he said that he is pissed off that WWE does not pay him for showing his matches on the WWE Network. I was going to talk about that during um, Around the Square Circle because I, I listened to that conversation with Andrew. Do you want to save it? Um, or yeah, you, can, you can mention it quick because there's other stuff you could talk about there. During the conversation, the champion said that it isn't fair that WWE doesn't pay him, and it has to change. No ill will towards WWE, but the fact that they could show all of my matches on their network that people pay for and I don't get a dime makes no sense. Uh, what do you think about that? It's true. Actors get fucking residuals from whatever they do. Hell, he said he still gets residuals from MacGruber. Oh, my God. So why not? But you see, let's once again, it's one of those contracts that WWE makes you sign. It's almost like signing a Bible or a fucking phone book. You're not going to sit there with a fine-tooth comb, and you're basically uh, putting a chokehold in a, in, 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 a, in, a, in a literal form because... 
if you take that contract and say, listen, I want my lawyer to look over this, they're going to be offended. It's like, well, you don't fucking trust us. Right. So you, you're going to sign off on it. Yeah, those matches, especially on the network, it's not like it's one of those... Um, if it was just an, an issue to where they don't show it because of like because there isn't a network where it's one of those highlight things where they show like on Saturday Night's main event or maybe like a, a YouTube thing or whatever is different. But you're on a net. You have an app. You have a network where people pay for it. Yes, you should be getting residuals for that. Yeah. Period. Yes, what the rock is cooking? On my end, that's it. Uh, congratulations to uh, D'Angelo De Niro for winning the NWA TV title at a UWN event. The Pope. The Pope wins a TV title. Uh, shout out to him. I always liked him. I like the Pope. Yeah. Elijah Burke. He's, yeah. he's Elijah Burke to me. Yeah, that, that was always my dude. Um, uh, Dada was finally released from Impact Wrestling. Dada, Daga, who's um, basically um, um, Tessa Blanche's male counterpart if you want to say I got his release um, who knows where he can go I smell Japan maybe all elite maybe but if he's if he's my, as much as a pain in the ass as, as Tessa Blanche is uh, I see I don't see it happening yep. somebody mentioned NXT and I'll go only way I can see that happen if he goes uh, if he goes against the cartel not with them yeah I agree uh, yeah and uh, what else we have there um WWE didn't want anybody doing any twitches, any cameos, none of that shit. They have made sure that they put them in a chokehold for that shit and locked them up and said, hey, you guys can't do that anymore. That's it. Why? Because we're doing it ourselves. That's right. Received notice that Big E is involved in a virtual meet and greet. You guys can meet <laughs> Big E via WWE by signing up for a virtual meet and greet with Biggie. They're going to call it Flamio. Jesus. Oh, it's Vincent K. McManio. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> come on. I mean, come on, WWE. Terrible. Stop. Terrible. It's another reason why this is bullshit that's going on with them. Absolutely. It's all about getting them. It's all about getting a dime on their own time. It's all about them doing. It's my creation, Vince. Not everything you have to do is your creation. Shut the fuck up. Let people get their third party money and shut the fuck up. And finally. Once again, our boy's in trouble. Our guy, Teddy Hart, was arrested again. This time in Texas, apparently he was eluding the law and such and such. <laughs> he, looks, he looks like he needs a home. My like man doing bad, son. You doing bad, son. Bad, bad. I feel, you know, Teddy Hart, you know, friend, uh, friend of the show, I guess you could call him. Not not doing well, so. I'm going to get that. I'm going to see if I can get that call again. See if I can get that. Um, exclusive. You get that exclusive. I'm home kind of shit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Teddy Hart, man, again. And then he looks like he looks homeless. Whatever's outside smells fucking delicious right now. <laughs> but um, nah, ser seriously, uh, Teddy Hart, man, uh, got to pick up the game, bro. Yeah, so uh, that'll wrap that up, guys. When we come back, we'll have uh, um, well, you know what? I can't even say because I don't even know what. You know, what? I'm probably gonna do it that order anyway. Around the square circle, we'll be talking about uh, our uh, predictions for Hell in a Cell, as well as uh, uh, what the hell we watched in wrestling and what we heard in wrestling, and boy, has it been a doozy. So, Oof. and also we have a conversation with our guy Hank Flanagan for Hank's Happy Hour. Guys, stick around. We we'll return. Don't go anywhere.
the square circle, ladies and gentlemen, here at Get Vocal. Turnbuckle Tabloid here to uh, feed and wet your whistle for all the things you need that is all connected with wrestling. Yes. Jada Santi, my guy Oski here across from me, here to discuss Round the Square Circle and what we watched and heard in wrestling. And seems like our boy Ben is in the building. Hi, hey, Ben. Ben. Yo, dudes. You all right? Hello, mate. How are we? Uh, what's going on, mate? Yeah, I'm all good. Just watch the UFC, so I'm happy. Yeah, yeah uh, the retirement. The retirement. We're seeing as those. Our guy is uh, giving us a swan song, a, a bit, bit, a bidding a fawn adieu to UFC. I think it's bullshit. He'll be back again. <laughs> I mean, listen, 29. No, he got, he got to make it 30. Yeah, I think it's bullshit. Yeah, got to be 30. He's got to be his corner as well. I'll smash him up again. <laughs> It's probably gonna be something like that, probably along those lines. I also, I also see maybe, maybe when the division gets a little bit more hotter, or uh, well, he he barely made weight this time around. He uh, yeah, he lost quite, he lost quite a lot of weight. So yeah, I wasn't out. This is the most I've ever been unsure on one of his fights, but guys, the guys a machine. Yeah, yeah, and I, like I said, you know, I was telling people this is gonna be an emotional match, but I also said it's gonna be a cakewalk for him. This is this is his uh. His his swan song, and uh, what a way to go out! But still, I still think he's gonna make a comeback. Just between you and I. So yeah, maybe around the square circle, ladies and gentlemen, we have a uh, as always our 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 notions, our thoughts about what's what we heard, what we saw, what we partook in this past week of wrestling. And Ben, uh, I'll ask you first of all. Uh, Listen to any podcast or listen to any uh, good stuff or read anything lately that has to do with wrestling? No, oh. I've been at work most of the week, so the only things I've watched is Impact and AEW. They're the only things that I've watched. Oh, we'll get that. Well, well, well ben, Ben's actually in the look for uh, if anyone's interested. Ben's looking for a DVD rack. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? They don't have one in Wish. Well, any kind of rack is good for me, especially the ones that hang off a woman's chest. I mean, the word hang, I'm not a big fan of. But yes, anyone that's on a chest of a woman's great. Oh, okay. As long as we're on par and having that same, uh, we're meeting eye to eye there, if you know what I mean, sir. Eh, 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 eh. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Uh, what, we, what we saw, what we listened to, what we heard around the square circle this week, I uh, listened to Jim Cornette, of course. This week he discussed on his show. Uh, first of all, did you know that Shotzi Blackheart basically was selling pictures of her poo yes i heard about that that, oh. makes, her more, that makes her more hot no i'm kidding, <laughs> I'm kidding. um yeah yeah I, I actually did hear about that listen man um uh, she if dumbasses are willing to pay for it i mean i'll i'll, I'll take a dime <laughs> listen i could say that i'm into some like uh, i wouldn't say off the wall shit literally but Images of her shit people were paying for. Yeah. Five dollars a pop. Wow. Can you imagine? That probably fed dinner that night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that that's that's half a fucking um that's half a six pack for me. All well, I gotta I like do is just take a picture send of my two, shit. Take two pictures of my shit and, and send it to you somebody. Shit a lot. Yeah. I, you know, mine actually looks like images. I could make mine look like Mount Rushmore. Well, ooh, so you're gonna take my uh my penis pick idea and make it with shit? Yeah, do it with shit. I can make mine look like uh Hanky the, the Christmas poo from South Park. Washington Monument. Oh, okay. Get that going Mount on. Everest. Uh Big Ben. I can get on going like Big Ben. Wow. The bell, not the not the clock. People always mistake that. Big Ben is actually am I right? Big Ben is the bell, not the the clock itself. That's very true. See? I got that. I, th I thought Big Ben was the um, the clock. No, no, it's the bell itself. No, no, no. see, wow, see, wow. you learn something new every day. Oski. I learn. I learn. Also, um, Cornette also discussed. Uh, uh, we didn't get to hear the full, um, the full uh, the, the rundown of what he thought about the Jericho uh, MJF um, segment, but I can only imagine if it's anything close to what we thought about it. Yeah, well, I mean, well, we'll save our reaction for when it comes to that time, but. Uh... Jim Cornette was not happy. Bashed the fuck out of it. I'm looking up news right now. He went off more than we heard. It's 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 bad. Also, bad. uh talk um um talk is Jericho, talk is Jericho. He had Andrew Yang, uh the former presidential nominee, discussing his thoughts about the WWE practices when it comes to their wrestlers and their performers. How um if you have them as independent contractors, then they should be free to do 
what they please as independent contractors. But apparently, you're still holding them under these restrictions. And Jericho basically said, when here in AEW, I get everything given to me. When we go to another city, we have a tour bus. We have hotels that are already set up for us. Right. The the cons treat the wrestlers as if it was a team. Like, they're a sports club. Right. They don't have to worry about getting from destination A to de- destination B to destination C all on their own dime. In, in WWE's practices is, here's a plane ticket. You're about to do the loop. You can fly into Cleveland. Once you get to Cleveland, you're going to Cincinnati, St. Louis, and then bouncing back into uh, Detroit. You have to get there all, at, all all on your own. Right. And it's like, that shouldn't, that shouldn't be part of their practice. So Andrew Yang basically said, look, there's got to be a way in which WWE handles their performance right, right, you know, the proper way. Because if it happens that Biden wins and Trump is out of office, Yang has a job, and it looks as though that he's going to be targeting WWE first. Of course. Yeah. Also on Talk of Jericho this week, he has Santana and Ortiz, proud and powerful on their part of the inner circle. And uh, most of the stuff we knew already, I heard a lot of the stuff on um, the Coke Cabana podcast, but I also heard of Ortiz because he was on the show before. Yes, he was. And basically elaborating on stuff, how they got into business. Shout out to, the, they, they gave the shout out to uh, House of Glory where they mentioned that he, um, they faced um, three um, Dully Boys and the Hardys at that House of Glory, which we were at. Yeah. And they got the call from Impact not too long after. Right. Right. So uh, we have that. And very touching moment, very sincere moment, and very uh, close to, to the show moment where Santana Ortiz talked about when Jericho brought up the the um, the passing of our friend of the show, Matt Travis, and Santana, who basically comes off as a curmudgeon. He's, he's very uh, uh, brass and not happy. Yeah, he always comes off like he's, he's he doesn't want to be bothered by anyone. And, but here he he opened up and showed his 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 true self and was very emotional and and it really t- it touched the nerve with me as well because we're we're coming up upon a year of this young man's uh, death and uh, yeah and, and shout out shout shout out to to Santana Ortiz for um, remembering him and and paying homage to him in the next couple of weeks for his anniversary we will in which I would do as long as this podcast is up we will play every year. On that anniversary of his, we will play his interview yes, on the show. I agree, and it should, it should. I, I fully, fully co-sign with that. Uh, other than that, what else you have on your tap? On, on your. You covered it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Everything you listened to, I did. Oh, okay. Swear to God. Uh, and uh, what do we have on? So we have, uh, we have um, predictions, huh? Predictions. We have two, two shows this weekend. I know Ben's excited about uh, one of them. Ben, are you excited? Yeah, I can't wait for it. Impact. I'm really excited for Impact. Yeah, Battle for the tonight, right, Ben? Yeah, it's on tonight. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure what time it's on over here. It's normally about one o'clock, so in about two and a half hours usually. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we have. Uh, let's do it. Let's do that first, shall we? Bound for Glory predictions, Ben. You could, of course, your predictions are are, are appreciated here. So uh, let's get started. First match of the night, we're going to talk about imp- the Impact World Championship as Eric Young defends against Rich Swan. Uh, ben, who you got? I uh, got Eric Young on this one. I think he, since he's come into Impact, he's been probably my favorite guy that's come back. To be honest, and his his character is very very good, and his promo works good as well. So, yeah, I'll go I'll go for Eric Young on this one. I agree, Eric Young with the win. I think his momentum is is picking up. I I, I think he's actually bringing the championship to some sort of value, and uh, Rich it's going to be a good match. But I think Eric Young retains. I'm going EY as well, and I'm hoping. That we see a possible clash of maybe EC3 happening soon. Yes, so. it, it could happen. Yes. Up next, we have Deanna Perrazzo versus Kylie Ray for the Knockouts Championship, and I'll be the first one to say it: Kylie Ray wins. Wow, Ben, what you got there? Uh, I like I like them both, but yeah, I, th- I think I'm going to go for uh, Deanna Perrazzo with um, Sue Young coming back and fucking Kylie Ray over. Yeah, I got Deanna Perrazzo. That's good. That's good. Good, good point there. I got uh, Deanna Perrazzo as well, and I don't see her getting a strap taken off of her for a little while longer, maybe after the turn of the year. Is she having a good title run, uh, Ben? Because I don't think so. 
Um, she's not as wrestling as much as I'd like her to wrestle, but in a way that's kind of like her character. So, yeah, she's uh, she's all right. I mean, I think there's better people there than her, but I I quite like I quite like her character. So, I think she hasn't been wrestling as much because uh, she's gotten a little portly, and they're trying to get her to lose the weight. Yes, she needs to, she needs to get back in shape. Yeah. Seems like a lot of people go, like especially the women they go to fucking Impact and they 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 have great craft services up there because yeah. they love the fucking they love eat that food. Yeah. Uh, not uh, anything wrong with that because you know I love my thick women. So uh, up next we, ha- we have the match which I think will steal the show. We have the tag team championships on the line as we have Motor City Machine Guns facing the Good Brothers, the North, and Ace Austin and Madman Fulton. I think the uh, I think the Motor City Machine Guns retain here. Uh, but I think this match will steal the show. I'm thinking this will be the match of the night. And as much as I want to say that the North uh, reclaims their title again, I think they're going to go the other way and give it to the Good Brothers. Mm, good pick. Good yeah, pick. I agree. I agree on that as well. That'll be. It will be a good match, though. Definitely. All those guys are all fucking awesome. Every single one of them. I laugh because uh, Ben sends me a video of him watching uh, Impact, and is that there's a spot where Ethan Page. Uh, hits on uh, on on the opponent, and he just looks at the the camera. And he gives like the the the, the wink and the hello. <laughs> He's like, I said, yeah. that, I said that's so me. I would so do that. <laughs> uh, Definitely blow a kiss as well. Exactly. We have Ken Shamrock versus Eddie Edwards. The I don't really give a fuck match the, of the I night. The, the, the match of irrelevancy. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm gonna go with nobody cares. No, <laughs> nah, I, I, nah, I'll pick one. I gotta pick. Uh, Edwards wins. Eddie Edwards wins. Who you got, Ben? I think it's going to be disqualification or some shit like that. I mean, I, I'm i not, at the moment, I'm not a huge Shamrock fan because I think, you know, he's a bit too old and whatnot, but he's in incredible shape for his age. But he is going into the Hall of Fame that night. So, I mean, can they put him in the Hall of Fame on a loss? Yeah, probably. I, I I don't mind who wins this match, but I think I think Eddie Edwards will win this match as well. I think, you know, I think, you know what they say? When they go out, they go out on their backs. I think he's going to do the honors. He's going to go out on his back. Um, <laughs> in an irrelevant match. In an irrelevant match. Uh, it it kind of reminds me of Kurt Angle versus fucking um, uh, um, uh, Baron Corbin. It's just like, why? It's like, whatever. On, on, on the Hall of Fame night, but Irrelevant. yeah, so uh, but it would be funny to see if Ken actually lets him go over. Yeah, 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 right. I and think he's gonna make that's him. Gonna be the comedy. I of the think night. he's gonna make him pay for that shit to right. go, go over. That's gonna be the comedy of the night here. Uh, I think, I think that's why they put Sammy Callahan with him because I think Callahan's gonna somehow fuck it up for Shamrock. Right. Um, and have, have, have maybe Eddie Edwards and um, Sammy Callahan join as a tag team, which would be pretty cool. I was actually thinking the same thing. Now that you you put that together, I was like, yeah, they impact. Although they are strong with their tag team division, that wouldn't that wouldn't mind that wouldn't work that would work as well. Like those two guys together, uh, I can see that working for them. Up next, we have the Call Your Shot Gauntlet, where twenty wrestlers will compete to earn a title shot at any title they want. The intrigue around this match revolves around Heath and Rhino, saying that if Heath or Rhino win, they'll go for the tag belts and beat a tag team once again. Because if Heath and Rhino win. Heath gets his big money contract. I call this the clusterfuck match of the night because <laughs> everything's going to be happening all at one fucking time. Do you this want me is... to name some of these fucking people in this match? I, I pretty much, but you could name Dreamer, some. Dreamer, Swinger, Alicia Edwards, Tennille Dashwood. Yeah. 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 It's, it's Point Hernandez. Over. Hernandez, yeah. Which, by the way, I'm not a fan of what they're doing with Hernandez no, over they, there. they're making him the goofball of fucking goofballs. Yeah. And I know he's probably happy with it. He's an older guy. He's getting a check. He don't give a fuck. But it's like, you were super max, bro. Like, yeah. come on, man. I think, I think, I, 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 I it's got to be Heath or Rhino win here. Whatever. What you got? Yeah, man? I think, I think Heath will turn heel and maybe throw Rhino out right at the end to there win. I don't know. Add some excitement to it. Well, that'll be the fact that'll be the way that he gets his contract, I guess. Yeah, no, that, that's yeah. what you're saying. If he right. wins, he gets the contract. Right. So, Up next, we have, which this match pisses me off on all statures here. Maybe because I don't like her, but whatever. X Division Championship Scramble is we have Rohit Raju defending against Jordan Grace, Willie Mack, Chris Bay, TJP and Trey Miguel. That match sounds amazing if you kick that bitch to the side. I do not like Jordan Grace. I'm and sorry. she's winning. And she's going to win the she's fucking gonna match. Win. And she's going to fucking win the match. Uh, win. What do you think about this, Ben? Um, I don't mind. As as a wrestler, as a female wrestler, I don't mind Jordan Grace. I'm not a big fan of her being in. I, I class the X Division as a male champion championship. So 
I'm not a big fan of her being in the match, but I think it that for me that might be the match of the night because I think every single one of those guys everyone is else, fucking awesome. Everyone else that match um, would be amazing. I, I would kind of like Rohit to win because I love I love his fucking character at the moment. Um, but yeah, I unfortunately think Jordan Grace might win as well. All right, and uh, finally. We get EC3 versus Moose in an undisclosed location, and I'll be the first one to break the news to you here. I'm predicting it now. It will be in the Ring of Honor arena. Really? EC3 said to meet to to meet. He posted on Twitter. He goes, "Moose, meet me in Baltimore. Guess where Baltimore? Guess 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 where guess where Ring of Honor is recorded? Baltimore. Oh. And there are already rumors. Listen, EC3 debuted in Ring of Honor. There's already rumors of a of a partnership being made between Impact and Ring of Honor. I think this is the opening night where we see a, the true partnership unfold. Oh, okay. That's um. I like Good that. Job. I like that. That's that's my prediction. I like that. And I, EC3. I, 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 and I'm gonna see, go with EC3 going over. I here. see EC3 as well. Yeah, you can't. You cannot have EC3 losing his first kind of proper match on a pay per view. Absolutely. So that's... another another man who has iconic status on his face uh, that could could be him, but <clears throat> something's missing so with close, him. As well. So close. Something's missing with him as well. Uh, that that's so that's Impact Bound for Glory, which is happening tonight, and then tomorrow night we have um, WWE Hell in a Cell, provided by. Nobody. Uh, <laughs> Snickers. Snickers. First match of the night, Jeff Hardy versus Elias. I got Elias picking up the win here. It's needed, and I think they're, they're actually going to try to push him on Raw. Uh, I'm going to say Elias as well, and I smell a honky-tonk chair shot coming. Absolutely, absolutely. What you got, Ben? I don't care, boy, Elias. Sorry, you're not a chair shot. It's a guitar shot. Guitar Sorry, shots. Guitar shot. Up next, we have The Miz versus Otis, and winner... Of this match gets the money in the bank briefcase. I'm praying to the Lord of God the Miz wins this match. So I'm gonna go with the Miz because I want him to win. Uh, do I think um, Otis is gonna keep this briefcase? No. So I'm gonna go with the Miz here. I'm gonna go with uh, Ben's uh, separated at birth brother, and I'm gonna say Otis wins this match. Oh God, I hope not. I hope not. I hope they really pull a, a Edge and Mr. Kennedy moment. Get this shit off this man. See, I I don't know any of these matches that you're saying because uh, I, I don't I only don't really keep up to date with Raw and SmackDown. But yeah, I, mean, I, I kind of would like Miz to win that one. I think he'd do a better job with a briefcase. Hundred percent. SmackDown Women's Championship is we have uh, Bailey versus Sasha Banks inside Hell in a Cell, and uh, I think Bailey retains here. It's not the time for Sasha to win yet. I think it's on a bigger platform. I think it's on a bigger show, and I think it's at Royal Rumble. Uh, so no, I think Bailey wins here. Bailey wins. Too many Hell in a Cell matches. I'm sorry. This one shouldn't have been in Hell in a Cell. It's the pay-per-view. I don't care. There's, there's way only, too There's only two other matches. I swear, this is like booking at 2K. You know when you when you make your own fucking matches in 2K and it's like, we're going to have Steel Armageddon and it's all Steel Cage matches every match? It gets watered but I'm down. I'm okay bro. with that though. Nah, not for not them. Every match. Not but for them. Listen, you know the you know the you know the you know the equal live world we live in now. They had to throw one woman match in the Hell in a Cell. They really didn't though. I, <laughs> they of course they had to. They didn't really have they to. They had to because they're fucking mongerers. But um, I got Bailey there. What you got, Ben? Yeah, I got I got Bailey as well, and I guarantee Sasha Banks is going to do a suicide dive and probably fold her fold herself up like like she does like an accordion when she fucks up. So I'll go for <laughs> Bailey. <laughs> um, next we have the Universal Championship match, my match of the night. I think this match is going to be great storytelling wise and in ring. We have Roman Reigns versus Jay Uso in an I Quit match. If 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 Jay Uso loses, Roman Reigns. Um, will be the leader of them. The Usos must do whatever he wants, and they and, and uh, that's it. So uh, I have Jay Uso losing this match. Roman Reigns takes the win, and this forms the the trio stable that everyone's been looking for. I'm um, the Samoan Dynasty becomes a stable. I'm upset because this is a match that is basically like um, you putting uh, shit on more shit because. You're making it a, a Hell in a Cell and an I Quit match? Yes. Why, why don't we just add barbed wire to it? Why don't we just add another cage inside of it? Why don't we just turn the ring on fire? Why don't we just All make right. it a... You, Come on, you get, man. You get the, you get the, you get the, I, I get it. You get, the, like, you, get the, you get the you get the premise of it. But I feel like you're being a little bit picky. It's a, it's wait. It's a too much. But, it's but, a lot. But, but I think the I Quit is not necessary, but I think it helps. Their, the family storyline is important. So, like... 
it's like a brother versus brother playing a fight in a fight at home, going, and the other person doesn't want to quit. Yeah, it's but it, but now we do it in a cage. Because that's the pay per view, though, on, Red. <laughs> that's the pay per view. It's way too much, man. It's way too much. But I'll take, of course, Roman is winning this. Of course, of course, Roman. Ben. Yeah, I think the reason they're doing the I Quit match because hasn't Roman got a new submission finisher that's like a guillotine? Yes, he does. Yes, that's that's the only reason they're doing it as an I Quit match. So yeah, I'll go to, to get his to get his finisher over. So yeah, I'll go for Reigns as well. And I think the little faction with Heyman and the Usos and Roman Reigns would be pretty cool. I agree. That shit's fine. That, Red's been wanting that. So, yeah, been calling for the long. He's been wanting Give it. Give me the Samoan SWAT team. And finally, more matches will be announced probably tomorrow, last minute. But uh, finally, we get the WWE Championship Hell in a Cell match. Drew McIntyre versus Randy Orton to main event the night. And uh, I know I keep saying this. I keep predicting this every show, but I'll say it just for the good people at home. Randy Orton wins. <laughs> Randy Orton wins and is your new WWE champion. I'm going to say Randy wins again. <laughs> <laughs> you keep testing right. our luck with this shit. Yeah, you know, you got you to gotta keep going to the well, man. You got to be right one time. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Ben? No, I'll go, for, I'll go for me, man, Drew. I can't see him losing it on a little pay-per-view like this. I, again, it's got to be Rumble or Mania for me. Hmm. All right, so that's our predictions for Hell in a Cell, and let's jump right into Monday Night Raw. Are we ready? Sure. Let's do it. Ben is not going to be involved because he doesn't watch this, so he'll just listen. No problem. We'll, we'll wait for AW because <laughs> I know if Ben tells me he likes one of the segments that happened this week, I'm going to fucking jump off a bridge. Um, so, Monday Night Raw starts off with The Fiend coming out. Uh, the Fiend and Alexa Bliss are together, and they make their names known on Monday Night Raw. The, 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 the season debut, the season premiere of Monday Night Raw. Fiend and Alexa Bliss go into the ring, and the Retribution then come out. Confronting the fiend and Alexa Bliss, who stare into the gazing moments of life, uh, looking like they're zooted off of life. They're they're zooted beyond belief. Um, before we continue, Ray, what do you think about the red retribution, retribution look? Oh, it, it looked good for the moment. It looked good for the moment. Uh, for the moment. Uh, it looked good for the moment. Um, the fiend and Alexa Bliss disappear. Her business come out. And we get the her business defeating Retribution via submission. Bobby Lashley locking the T bar in the Hurt Lock. Which, if you don't know who T bar is, ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's Dominic Dijakovic. Quick tap out there. The match was pretty good. It was okay for me. I, I didn't hate it. Uh, I love her business. Retribution's growing on me with Mustafa Ali as the as the leader, but um. Later on in the show, Ali cuts a promo saying the Fiend and her business made a mistake, thinking his only power was strength in numbers. Uh, Red, what do you thought about this segment, this match? What do you think about the her business, Retribution, and the Fiend on Raw? Everybody's talking about that this is pretty much a burial. I'm not a burial sure. Of what? Of Retribution. No, no, no. I don't see it that way. It's a day, guys. Can we chill? Yeah, I don't <laughs> see it that way. No. No, I don't see it at all. I think it's, you know what I think it is? I think it's the buildup of Mustafa Ali breaking out of his calm character to becoming pissed off. Right. And him, you know, it's an emotional change. It, it takes time to grow these emotional characters. So I think that's what it is. Uh, up, you know what they should do? What happened, Ben? They should give him a police truncheon and some pepper spray. <laughs> She might as well <laughs> fuck it, right? He, he used to be a cop. He used to be a policeman, so yeah, yeah, why yeah. not? Yeah, right. I agree. Fuck give, it. Give him a nightstick. It's just like you know, in America right now, it's kind of like, yeah, yeah. Give him, give him a give him a nightstick. Give him a nightstick and tell him to fuck himself. Oh, a taser. <laughs> um, also, on Monday Night Raw this week, we had AJ Styles defeating Matt Riddle, and I thought it was a really good match. Well, you, well, you you agree? Yeah, I think um, um, like I said, we've seen it before, but it's one of those that. I could keep watching it. That that's a few that I think could go on for a while. But the thing to note here was AJ Styles introduces his new seven th- foot three bodyguard, Jordan. Butcher that name. Omeg bin. Just call it Jordan. Just, Just call it Jordan. 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 Tall Jordan. Just call him um, Tall Jordan. And it seemed like it paid off for Styles after he provided a distraction outside the ring. Um, so he got into a big altercation with the referee before the match, saying he didn't want to leave. Uh, I thought that was corny personally because. Your 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 man is out here to win, and you're gonna stop that. I mean, I guess. Uh, but AJ Styles and Matt Riddle was a good match. It was a good match overall. Styles picks up the win, and uh, like I said, solid in ring action. But the main topic there was the new bodyguard. Red people are saying this is um, Vegeta and Nappa. 
<laughs> and Napa. <laughs> and Napa. What do you think? <laughs> it looks. It does kind of got that look to it. But... Why do you think they decided to do this? Because they could have gave Jordan to someone else. They could have gave Jordan a part of the Hurt business for God's sakes. No, and that's not no, racist. No, 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 no. That's just. I just think that would have been a, a cool idea. Nah, it's kind of racist. Um, but <laughs> sure. But if you want, if you want to believe no, that. No, I. It, Listen, AJ right now is he I love him and all, but you know, he can run stale when he's by himself. Yes, he can. He so, need, I think the Good Brothers really helped him out. And then plus with the heel kind of look, I mean with his heel look and he needs that kind of bodyguard kind of situation and once you put a strap on, you know, get him get him a belt, it'll it'll work even more. Absolutely. Up next, we had the Raw Women's Championship as Asuka defeated Lana in 10 seconds <laughs> with the Asuka lock as predicted to, re- to regain the title. After the match, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler attacked both women from behind with N- with Jax putting Lana through a table again. Again. <laughs> now it's a meme at this point. They're going to throw her through a table for like five more Every weeks. time I see her go through the table, all I hear is Benny Hill music. Sorry, Ben, but you already know what it is. <laughs> the ultimate meme of life. Lana going through the table, the rest of of 2020, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Asuka knocks Baszler from the ring and escapes any further damage. Where do you think Asuka... Who do you think Asuka's next opponent will be? We got Shayna, Nia. Do we maybe see uh, someone else? I'm Uh, going to go with with Shayna. It should be, but I think that's something that they're waiting for to build for a longer time. Uh, Well... Yeah. Well, listen, there, we got a, we got a bunch of new acquisitions on Raw. We'll speak about it right now. We got Mia Yim coming up. Mia, gotta... Mia Yim. We got Dana, uh, Mia and Manny Rose and Dana Brooke. Yeah. We got um, Lacey Edwards. By the way, let's go straight into that train wreck. Nia Jackson, and Shayna Baszler defeat the Riot Squad, Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke, and Peyton Royce and Lacey Evans in a tag team uh, clusterfuck, basically showing, hey, we have women's tag teams. The same thing they did on SmackDown. We have men's tag teams. Uh, and I'll be the first one to say it, Peyton Royce and Lacey Evans – Never do that again because that was the biggest disrespect to me. You're telling me you break up Iconics to put them on Solo's runs but then throw automatically in a new team? Yeah. Mm. No sense being there, uh, being made there, sir. No fucking sense. Uh, uh, like I said, Nia Jackson, Shayna Baszler win. If anyone's asking me who the best women's tag team right now is, I'm going to go with the Riot Squad. They have matching gear. They look good together. They fucking match. They, I, I think they are truly the women's tag division. Red, what do you thought about this, uh, about, about this attempt to show us they have, we have depth in the in the tag team division because they clearly don't. I would like Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke are the definition of Sable and Trish Stratus. Yes, yeah, they're with the music, much. the the football music, the fucking bullshit. It, it screams to me, let's make them have big titties and blondes. I'll go with Ben and how they would say across the pond where you would see, uh, the Riot Squad look how they look together. They look mint. They look mint, mint. together. They they're, look, they're mint together. Look great. Uh, you see, Ben, I'm learning. I'm learning. Uh, <laughs> hmm. um, as for right now, uh, it, it it's a it's a hodgepodge of 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 of, of women that are being thrown together mm-hmm. just cause for that for that for just for that for that 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 division. It doesn't it doesn't. I mean, granted, I I'll go with the Mandy and and Dana thing because it's they're similar looking. Yes, yeah, yes, that so works. That works. But the, everybody else is Lacey just like and Peyton. Like, what the fuck was that about? And where the fuck are you gonna do with uh, with, with the uh, with the other one? What are you gonna do with Billy uh, Kay? She's Billy on SmackDown Kay. and she's gonna be buried in five minutes. Exactly. Next week she loses to fucking Bianca Carmilla. Belair. No, to Bianca yeah, Belair. Bianca, you're right. That's and no, bad. no, she's gonna be paired with Carmella. It'll yeah. be some shit like that. Let's switch them around, shall we? Exactly. Uh, in my match of the night, we had Kofi Kingston defeating Sheamus. I thought this was absolutely phenomenal. It, it was absolutely great. It was the best thing I've ever seen in my life. And Tifa left wing. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Kofi Kingston defeats Sheamus here at the Trouble in Paradise. Um, Sheamus tries to run down New Day for being split by Big E, but ends up. With a loss, funny to see Biggie and Mark Henry on the fucking screen on 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 uh, on in the Thunderdome. Uh, I th- but I thought it was a great match. Uh, same, yeah. I mean, something we've seen before, and uh, and SmackDown. But, but the they, experience is clearly there. But yeah, it, it, but that's you know you got to bring that that uh that chemistry to to Raw now. Titus O'Neil suggests joining up with the group with the Hurt Business, only to be shot down and then beat down by the group. I like that. It shows that they're still heels and they show that they still have aggression in their souls. Uh, t- Tucker and El Gran Gordo, which of course is Otis. I thought I swore it was Ben. I thought Ben actually got into Ben. The were you Ben? Were you on a roll this week? Uh, I'm not allowed to say this. Oh, see. Oh, okay. All right. Shh. 
Which, That's by the way, why he wears a mask. Which, by the way, they, they have to make every single person in WWE history to to do incognito to be a luchador. I was waiting to see all the guys on two, uh, 2K Creations make him. <laughs> El That's Gr what I was waiting for. El Gran Gordo and Tucker defeat The Miz and John Morrison via pinfall. Of course, G Gordo, which is... Otis hit Miz with the Vader bomb. Nothing much to say here. I mean, side thing. Miz got distracted when R Truth ran through the ring mid match, and of course we get the Mooks chasing him for that 24/7 belt. Bray Wyatt hosts a new Firefly Funhouse, and we have Alexa Bliss joining the Funhouse. Yay! Bliss saying the fun is just beginning. I think it's going to be a great new look for the Funhouse. I think it's going to be a great segment to have, and uh, Alexa Bliss plays the part well, so I'm happy to see it. Uh. We and before the before the main event, which was Keith Lee and Braun Strowman, we had um, Drew McIntyre cuts a backstage promo on, on Randy Orton, saying that Orton was smart for attacking the Legends because he knew it would provoke McIntyre to accept his challenge. McIntyre says that uh, at Hell in a Cell he'll go through Hell and back, and will put Orton through Hell to remain champion. Uh, and actually scratch that yeah that happened and then we get Keith Lee <laughs> sorry we get Keith Lee and uh, Braun Strowman uh, which I'm happy to see Braun Strowman win because people were uh, he's been losing left and right uh, people are saying they don't know what to do with Keith Lee I don't believe that I think that there's hope for him in the future I think that he's gonna supposedly right if you wanna hear good news Keith Lee was spotted in New York doing vocals for his new theme song oh Thank you. So it seems like we we're getting a new song by Keith Lee. I don't mind his new one, but to add a few lyrics in there, I can't, I can't be mad. Braun Strowman uh, um, wins here, though. And um, after the match, um, Lee follows up with a punt to the groin. Good. Screaming at Strowman, saying that he picked the wrong one. Red, is this a heel turn for Keith Lee? No, but I like I liked the uh, – it's basically the, the – the personality of listen, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let you get away with that shit. One, one good turn deserves another, sir. Exactly, and I, I, I hope it's not a heel turn yet. I do think. I don't that, think so. I think it's a good move on their part, and I think that it shows Keith Lee and Braun Strowman being the monsters of Monday Night Raw. And finally, on Monday Night Raw, here we had Randy Orton closing the show with a promo inside Hell in a Cell. Orton says that it's his his time in the cell when he was when he realized what he was truly capable of. Uh, about him and Undertaker. Um, fighting, you know, him, just talking about his history with Hell in a Cell. Drew McIntyre's music hits to cut him off. They get into, they beat the shit out of each other, and then McIntyre pulls the cell door closed behind him. And then, of course, the show goes off on air. Right? What do you thought about that awkward ending to Raw? They were about to fight, and it's over. Was that on purpose? You thought that was like, oh fuck, we ran out of time. No, nah, no, nah, I think it was done purposely. Really? Just to hype yeah. up like good imagery, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all it was. It was, it was, it was, he, they didn't want to see um, Randy get raped by Drew. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a big oh God. It was a man on man loving. Nobody wanted to see that. All right. So that was Monday Night Raw. And let's go straight into AEW. You sure? You sure? Or you want to save Impact for later? What? You want to save Impact for later? I'm not doing Impact. Oh, I, I got it. AEW. Oh, no. No, I, no, I said, do you want to save Impact for later? Because I have, I have Impact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I didn't watch Impact this week. Yeah, I have it. But don't worry. Yeah, go to AEW first. Yeah, so AEW Dynamite started off this week with the the, qual the the first round of the tournament, which was Jungle Boy and um and Wardlow in a singles match. And I'll be the first one to say it. Thank you for impressing me with putting a singles match to open the show. It was a great match. Uh, it, set the, it set the mood for the rest of the evening. And, and Jungle Boy and Wardlow are great talent. I know a few people who say Warlow is not good enough to make it red. What do you think about Warlow's performance this week? No, he's 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 progressing, and so far, if I had to choose between him and Lars fucking Sullivan, I'm I'll taking pick him. Warlow any day of the week. Any day. I mean, seriously. Let's I mean, just be honest. Uh, the match here was power versus speed. Jungle work. Uh, Jungle Boy um, worked the legs of the big man. Like we said last week, did we not say in David versus Goliath type contests? Work the legs, try to trip them, uh, um, do things that uh, um, you know, like um, Jack and the Beanstalk would do, and, and that's what he was doing this week, working the legs of the big man. But of course, Wardlow picks up the win. He will advance in the tournament. Great match to start off the night, and I was happy to see both of these guys get the spotlight they deserve. And finally, a match on on AEW that I was actually able to watch for the first time when the show starts. Yeah, thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank What'd you. Th you th did you watch um, AEW, Ben? Yeah, yeah, I watched AEW. Yeah. And there was no after match shit shenanigans that went on. It was just a match. Yes. They were both good. Wardlow's F10 is fucking meant. Um, and there was nothing after, which is great because there's normally some shit that goes on after the match. So, yeah, it was a good match. 
The only thing I say about match. the only thing I think I say about Wardlow is that he's gonna. Although it looks impressive when you have a bigger guy to throw around with because it shows your strength. Yes. He's going to change. He's one way or another. He's got to get to get a new finisher as well. Yes. It's coming soon. It's yeah. coming soon. Up next on uh, AEW, we had Kenny Omega reinventing himself as, once again, the cleaner is back, ladies and gentlemen, starting with the worst entrance in AEW history. Well, first, wait. He had me in the beginning. He had me in the beginning because... What, what had you? The girls with the brooms? No, 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 no. The music itself was very old school freestyle kind of music and if um if if Isaac was here he would say the same thing it it sounded very old school freestyle 80s 90s New York shit um I did hate though before but when you were looking at the video I did I just want to point out I fucking hated the fact that I hated Justin Roberts announcing a call on this one you you remember in the beginning they go please welcome he is a former AAA mega champion. Oh. He was wrestler of the year, and he broke David Meltzer's star scale. Oh. Best of all, like they brought up Dave Meltzer like twice on this show. Hold on, hold on, wait. Let me hold on. Let's see if I play this. Wait. Let's see. And now the mega champion of AAA. Ben, you hear this? Top 500 number one wrestler in the world and a Wrestling Observer's Wrestler of the Year in 2018. Sports Illustrated's Wrestler of the Year in 2017. He has broken the Meltzer five-star scale seven times and has won the highest rated singles and tag team match of all time. He is so fluent in Japanese that he sometimes translates from Michael Nakazawa. He once performed in North Carolina. <laughs> he stands six feet tall and weighs 224 pounds. He is Kenny. Except, excessive that. much? Yo, he said, he's one, he wants fought in North Carolina. I'm like, I don't care. The thing is, right, they have got to keep doing that now because you've got, I think they're trying to turn Kenny heel. Yes, they are. Keep doing yes, that. Are. Keep pissing people off with that bullshit and it'll make you hate Kenny Omega a lot more. And that introduction lasted longer than the fucking match. It really <laughs> did. Uh, and if, if you guys want to even bring it up, this kind of reminds me of, I don't know if you guys want to remember this. I remember what, well, I can't really talk. This is in my fucking ear. Where does that leave us? Where does that? <laughs> Listen, I'm all cool with the freestyle music, but then it went back to his normal music, and I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. all right, right, fuck me. Uh, but I will, th th does this remind you, remember when Eva Marie, they tried pushing her, and then the announcer was like, hey, hey good dad, Angel! Angel! Angel, Angel, I know you're there. I see you. Hi, good dad, Angel. Good dad, are you there? He'll get on in a second. All right, well, so like I said, it reminds me of Eva Marie when they did the announcing of like, oh, she's red. She is the delicious. Like, like that shit will get over as a heel, so it'll work. Um, Kenny Omega absolutely destroys Sonny Kiss. Like I said, Joey Janela being replaced because of COVID um, circumstances. Uh, Kenny beats Sonny Kiss in like 10 seconds. The match was quick. And then Omega picked up Kiss, who was struggling to regain consciousness, and did a good sportsmanship routine. Uh, of course, that is fake, and Kenny Omega will turn heel, and uh, um, people are excited to see the future for Kenny Omega. <laughs> Did you see the dumb meme face? That yes. <laughs> <laughs> the meme of that little boy with the fucking bowl cut. Exactly. Yeah, that shit. Yeah, I, mean, I know. I know about that shit. Well, by the way, what is it? Uh, we, we mentioned this. Sunny Kiss replaced Joey Janela because yes, because of COVID right, circumstances. Right, right. Okay. Uh, but I like the fact that yes, that's the way you're supposed to win yes. a match. Which, by the way, who's wrapping the Tupperware in the back? That's Angel back there. Angel's uh, uh, cocinando. He's cooking. Oh, okay, okay, boy, okay, boy, get that in, boy. Um, <laughs> I don't even know if he hears us. He probably doesn't. Uh, no. he, he's watching for the fun. Yeah. What? Well, he's there. Do, I, do, I, do we wait for him? I don't know. He just, I can't it's hear anything. Awkward. It's like, uh, it's it's probably on your end, sir. Should I just continue? Yeah, yeah, keep going. Uh, up next, we have Hangman Page defeating um, Cole Cabana to, um, to advance in the, in, the, in the tournament. I love Hangman Page. He's one of my favorite wrestlers in the company. Uh, took care of business here. Um, I was happy to see Colt be more serious um, than, than usual. It was actually a pretty good match, but Hangman hit all corners this night. Real cowboy shit. Hangman, <laughs> Hangman Page picks up the win here. Uh, Red, what do you think about this contest? Because I did like Cole Cabana in this match. There's an another good match that occurred. We had another good match that occurred. Wow, AW, good, positive. Po can we mute? 
Can, no offense, I love you, Angel. Can we, can we mute the? <laughs> I think he's still working the on the Tupperware because he said he can't hear us. So uh, yeah, that's yeah. unfortunate. Yeah. Um, um, but wow, AW check. Second match check. Third match. Holy shit, we're on a roll. Can AEW actually be fully good this week? Was it stacked with stacked on top of stackness? Well, ben, what'd you thought? Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed those first three matches. I like Colt Cabana anyway. And I, I like the, as much as I'm not a huge fan of a shitload of the after match shenanigans with the dark order picking him up. I unmuted, I that you. Was... I unmuted you, Angel. Yeah. Do you think Colt, uh, Ben, do you think Colt gets the, 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 the credit as due as as a as a professional wrestler? No, definitely not. Everyone thinks he's just a comedy guy, but he's actually a really fucking good wrestler. I do think that um, the matches are being taken more seriously this week. I think Cocabana. I do like the fact that Dark Order picked him up because usually they don't do that. Usually they 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 they, they they're pissed off. They they're mad. They actually showed that without Brody Lee being there, uh, they care about each other. And I think that's a good story to 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 do down the line. I think it's actually going to come soon. Um, also, we had Phoenix and Pentagon in in a brotherly battle. Red, I know you had a few gripes with this one. I enjoyed it. There was a few botches. I will say there were a few botches. And then just to get out of the way, Pe um, Phoenix did win, but then due to injury. Um, he gave up his spot to his brother, which I don't even think you could do that, but okay. Uh, <laughs> like, give it to whoever I want. Fucking AEW. They can do whatever the fuck they want, man. I guess so. They I do guess whatever so. they want. Oh, man. Okay. Um, what, what were your problems with this match? I don't I don't think it should have been a match that line. It, it didn't make sense to me to have them fight at all in the first round. It should have been a, a meet-up pairing later on. You think so? Yeah, I think it should have been a meet-up pairing later on in the round. Um... Good match though. to kick it off. It, 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 it wasn't great. Is a possibility that we're saying that they're going to be breaking up because of this? I like, think so, and I think it's needed. I think they need. I think, I think. I think there's too many tag teams for Lucha Bros to be in the tag division anymore. I think that they could be great singles guys. I think Phoenix could be great on his own. And um, you know my you know my feelings, but I love Pentagon. Well, you can't call him that no more. But whatever. I hate that new name sucks. Anyway, uh, Ben, what do you thought about this brotherly battle? I love every match that these two do. Um, I'm not surprised there's botches because the way that they wrestle against each other, the fucking move that got Phoenix injured, the 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 outcome of that was horrible. And uh, he landed right on his head. That's you can see he was hurt. fucked. But again, I'm with you guys. I don't I don't like to see him at the beginning of of the tournament. I think there should have been four more people, right? So they could have got through and then faced each other. I don't think they'd be breaking up because Eddie Kingston's little. Faction, I think, you know, if they broke one of them up, you know, it makes uh, Eddie what Kingston kind of look uh, a bit weak at, oh, as a leader. So, yeah. I think, to, to me, I think that down the line, I really think they're about to break um, uh, Proud and Powerful away from Jericho. I think what's going to happen, which later on, when we see the... Um, the Android one. Roll oh, to wait. the road to Wrong Iden. Um, when... Jericho finally says that he wants MJF in the inner circle. They say, no, we if you take him, we're out of here. So I think that um, it becomes that they actually leave and become part of Eddie Kingston's faction. So I, I can see the uh, Penta and, and Phoenix break up. LAX style. Yes, exactly. Um, also, also on AEW this week, before we get to the... Okay... <laughs> it, was it, was, it was announced that John Moxley will fight Eddie Kingston in an I Quit match at Full Gear on November second. Uh, Mox demanded the contest to be made. Um, really weird, weird. Um, why? Who recorded Eddie Kingston naked in the shower? <laughs> what do you mean? But oh, it was it was Ben. It was Ben. ben did you record him in the shower? It was Ben. Yeah. Which, by ben. the way, his shower uh, has blinds. <laughs> You noticed that, right? <laughs> Whose shower has blinds? <laughs> it's going to get the floor wet. <laughs> I guess. I don't know what. I'm not a fan of this bullshit. I'm not a fan. I, I, I love them two together, and I'm happy they're giving Eddie Kingston the... You're going to get the floor the, wet. I'm giving, I'm, I love they're giving Eddie Kingston the spotlight he deserves, but I think, once again, Moxie couldn't be there because of COVID concern, but uh, I am happy that um, we saw Eddie Kingston in a shower. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> That's going to talk about there, guys. Let's keep moving. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, okay, whatever. Um, no, go ahead. Uh, Promo-wise, these guys are going back and forth. It's pretty awesome. I like the yeah. storytelling here. It was quick that uh, on the fly that they put. And I don't even think that this is a Tony Khan story. I think this is a, a story that, that, that Eddie and um, 
Moxie came together and said, listen, we know each other from the Indies. We're really good friends. And what makes a better story than two friends meeting each other and beating the shit out of them here? here? So I think it works best here. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, also this week, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, defeated Killian King. People are saying this match was awful. People are saying, actually, uh, Jim Cornette's saying she hates Britt Baker? Yeah, what's the, what's the deal after, with this? after that, um, after that, uh, that that match at a fucking um, all out, it's um, it's terrible. He just, he just says it's god awful. Well, the whole woman's division, and is. he's he's just he's tired of it. He says she has such promise. Angel, do you hear us now? I hear you guys. Yay! Hey! Angel, good that Angel's in the building, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, um, miss you, Angel. Angel, your thoughts on. Before, he got look. Look at him. He is looking sexy as fuck. Look Yo, at Angel, why are you looking so good for me, son? Shit. What's hey, up, damn. Angel? You don't. You don't have to try to look good for me. I, I'm already impressed by you every day. He almost looks Samoan. <laughs> he almost got that Samoan look. For real, it's looking good, man. This, this is gonna be changing in a couple of days. So. Oh, that's that no, COVID look. That's that COVID no. look. What, what are you doing with yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna shave all this, all this off. I thought we agreed when we started dating to not change the <laughs> way we look. By the way, happy anniversary of, of us uh, traveling to Philly to watch uh, uh, AEW Dynamite. Been a year already, fam. Been a year. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. A year ago, when Red peed on the sidewalk of the uh, the highway. I peed everywhere, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I peed everywhere on that trip. Amazing trip, man. So, uh, Angel, what's your thoughts about AEW's uh, women's division? I mean, we all have our um, the same qualms opinion. about it, but what's your thoughts about it now? Um. I, I I just been catching up with AEW. I, I'm um just lost for words with <laughs> how much dick riding fucking these fans are, and uh, yeah, it's man. crazy. They, they like like Maddie say it like says all the time they're blowing their beef, but every <laughs> everything that beef. they do it's like they could do no wrong. And and I think I think with this this uh, I always wanted to call in and talk about it. Anytime they say that they're doing something like with the ratings war and everything like that. People were like, yeah, we're winning the demo, you know, and all this bullshit. They feed into it. And and like you said, Red, at plenty of times, they're a bunch of fucking sheep. And yeah. it's, 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 it's horrible. Man. You remember, remember, remember AEW, Red just stands up and goes, bah, bah. Ben, we're in the middle of AEW Dynamite in Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all I kept yelling at these people was, sheep, sheep, you're all sheep. <laughs> yeah. Like, yo, like everything they did was like. Standing ovation for these ever. fucking marks. Fucking horrible, man. Well, get, well, get ready, Angel, because we're, we 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 have to. You have to stay in here. And we have to discuss the the worst moment in all elite wrestling history. Oh no 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 no! We're that's, not there that's yet, only though. by that's only by opinion. That's no, only by opinion. If it's not your opinion, I don't give a fuck what I say. <laughs> You're on some next level shit. So let's continue. Let's do the uh -huh. let's, let's run through the rest of the show because I, we have to get to it. And will we get in trouble if we play a part of it? No, we'll be all right. Okay, we always say we, courtesy of blah 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 blah. We have blah, to blah. play a part of it. Okay, uh -huh. it's it's impossible if we don't. All right, so also on AEW this week, we had a quick segment of Darby Allen and Steve-O doing a fucking uh, a jackass moment. Once again, showing Darby Allen's uh, wherewithal to be a daredevil. Did it, I thought it was lame. I, I mean, he just fell off a fucking skate ramp in a body bag. I mean, great, uh, uh, like, like Jim Cornette said, it, meh. Yeah. Meh. That's all I got to say about that. The bunny is back with the blade and the butcher. Just oh, that Eddie out. Kingston bringing yeah. everybody together. Eddie Kingston bringing love. One heart, one again. heart at a time. Uh, once again, I'm happy that this whole QT Marshall and fucking Gold Digger story is over with. <laughs> uh, they showed the clip for Dark for the first time ever. They give us backstory of of what happened at, on Dark, which is rare for them because they never give us a fucking backstory with anything. But um, yeah, you know what. Happy to see her back with that. Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara was announced for full gear in an elite deletion match. Are they ever going to give up on these fucking two? Yes. After this, right? Yeah, it needs to be done. It, it needs to be done. It, it, it had promise yeah. early on, but it should it should it should it, it should go to bed. What do you think, Ben? Um, first of all, I'm happy Ali's back with them because we get to see her wear leather more, which is good. <laughs> This guy. Um, He's all about the women. I'm telling you, always, Ben is all about the women. Always. <laughs> um. And yeah, uh, Darby Allen thing was shit. Um, and then what were you on about after that? I forgot uh, what you're anyway, you know, it's funny. What ben loves that hardcore death shit, and even he said, "Yeah, that that was because shit." Because it wasn't even a dare. It wasn't a move that I thought it was, it was like, "Oh." <laughs> I could but do yeah, that shit. it was uh, oh. Sammy oh. G. Sammy, Sammy G. I like Sammy G. Um. I think this after this little match feud 
and Matt Hardy hopefully loses, it'll be uh, it should be done and dusted. I hope. Absolutely, I agree. Up next, we have Team Taz wanting an answer from Will Hobbs about joining the group. Ricky Starks threatens violence toward Darby Allen, and then um, bonus points for bonus points to Taz for using the word fugazi. And- <laughs> In, in, in uh, you know um, whatever Darby Allen is getting a TNT championship match at um, at Full Gear and Team Taz is pissed about it that's all I, I gotta say I still don't know what Taz is is he an angel isn't he like a Puerto Rican Guinea or some shit like that I always thought he was Puerto Rican man I, I crazy too, but I like, think he's Italian yeah I think he's like a mixture of both he's like one of those dark suavesy like kind I of guess, I guess like from Sicily or some shit I don't I know I always thought he was Puerto Rican yeah <laughs> from Red Hook I'm from Red Hook <laughs> uh, t- <laughs> also on the night we get Tony Schiavone interviewing Orange Cassidy for a comedy cut. Fuck that. Uh, <laughs> um, we get the we get the four way tag team number one contender match, and we get Private Party knocking. <laughs> can't say this with a straight face. Uh, <laughs> knocking Alex Reynolds out cold. Shoot, ladies and gentlemen, shoot. Wow. Alex Reynolds gets wow. knocked out cold from and, private party. And, and mind you, these guys probably fought each other up and down the Eastern Seaboard maybe about 50 times. Yes. And Had to be. It takes one you know, mistake. The, way, the, the worst part about that is after he was knocked out and they got him out of the ring, he then had to carry on wrestling and they picked him up and like super kicked him. And he just kept falling over like whilst he was running. It was horrible to watch. It was Very sh- poor referee, in my opinion. Yes, by the it- way, what the fuck? What 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 is this with FTR putting re- tag teams over on on the mic? Why is it that anyone? <laughs> Facts though. The, 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 all right, come on. Listen, let's stop this nonsense. Why is it that these heels go on the fucking mic and all of a sudden they become sissy marys? What the fuck is this? I think, in, in my opinion, I think they just they, they they're putting way too many people on commentary. Period. That too. I mean, every fucking match is someone's on commentary. Everybody's on a mic. It's it's wasted time and wasted um, character like development. Five on a commentary. Yeah. yeah, sounds like a sounds like a drunk fucking Friday night here at Turnbuckle Tabloid. Yeah, sounds like it for real. <laughs> uh, but at the end of the night, Young Bucks win. They are the number one contenders. They will be facing FTR. We will be getting that match. The revival, Young Bucks, full gear. That end of the night and. Uh, you know, nothing much to say about about that, but hopefully it's a good match. And finally, on AEW Dynamite, we got to talk about it, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't miss anything, did I? No. no, no, no. Okay. I'm not going to go through all this. I just got to go just breeze this way, through it. Chris Jericho and MJF met for a steak dinner. They, oh, they God. Both, they both ordered bloody rare meat and red. Please play this fucking terrible clip. <laughs> uh, Velma. I would love a porterhouse steak, also 20 ounces, also with a baked potato, but I'd like that cooked medium well. Okay, let's go. Please strike my last order. I would like a 20 ounce porterhouse steak with a baked potato on the side. Okay, let's get that shit. Haven't said a word. Terrible. Rude to everybody. Who's that even rude Rude to? to Okay, let's skip this shit. We're the two biggest stars in all of professional wrestling. Us working together, man. The demo guy. Okay, here we go. It's 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 just. Wait, here we go. Get ready. Wait, turn this around. I gotta see this shit with you. Hold on. Look at this. Like the wallpaper sticks to the wall. <laughs> like the seashore clings to the sea. <laughs> like you'll never get rid of your shadow. Chris, you'll never get rid of me. Let all the Somebody that needs to do a Photoshop of me and you on this. They gotta do a Photoshop of our heads on this shit. We've got us. We're closer than pages that stick in a book. We're closer than ripples that play in a book. Oh my god. Turn to Classic Movies brought to you by All Elite Wrestling. Gets closer to recliner, thrown in that Hardy's forehead, guys of me. We're closer than snakes are, they slide through the grass. We're closer than Cody is to a jackass. Not a soul can bust this team in two. We stick together like glue. And when it's sleeping time, that's when we run. This is douche chills. I get douche chills listening to this. This is atrocious. What a surprise. They ring. A ding ding happy new year. Okay, I can't. I, I can't. I can't with this shit. 
<laughs> Red, I the can't. stage, the stage is yours. I can't with this shit. Cause it, I'll say one sentence, you could go on. This was the worst segment in professional wrestling history. Period. Go. I can't with this shit. And and and, and I, I hate to be one of those guys that does. This whole back and forth with the well, if WWE did it, you know, then no, you guys would no. be pissing on it. But now there's AEW. It's fucking the greatest thing since sliced bread. But it's facts, though. Yeah. It's facts. Yeah, facts. Then somebody says, somebody makes a comment on a group page where they said, well, nobody said anything about what Miz and Morrison did their rap video. Here's the difference: their gimmick is being Trolls. assholes and taking the piss out of their opponent. Yes. This shit here. Mm-hmm. Was just Jericho and fuck and basically Jericho's good. MJF was just like fuck it, but this is Jericho saying we, we can make this great. Watch, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is th- this is gonna be amazing. Jericho thinks anything he creates is gold, and he somebody really needs to humble his ass because it's not the case at all. They, they ripped that from Family Guy. Exactly yeah, what we Brian were saying. I'm telling bro, bro. you. We're on the road to Rhode Island. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah, literally anything that that like pop culture related, AEW tries to rip it off. Yeah, but they do. It's just like they make it cool. The only thing is that WWE, when they do it, they do it a year and a half later, where AEW is at least on the pulse, and they're like doing it eight months later. That's what the fuck they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. This was ben, a train wreck. I, ben, I don't want to interrupt your eating session right now, but I have to ask, what did you think of this? <laughs> um, it was I, it I was funny because it. it was like so shit. But <laughs> it's like, do I like do I like it because it was so shit, or do it, or was it just? It's like a mega short versus giant octopus thing. <laughs> it's so fucking shit that it's good, but I I didn't like I didn't like it. I liked the beginning bit. With the ordering of the steaks and all that, I thought that was funny, but then they bust into that, and I was literally sitting here. I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" This was the so, worst segment in wrestling history. I don't care what you tell me. I, I prefer Shockmaster over this. This was an embarrassment. No, no, this was a spit in the face to professional wrestling because yes, we understand entertainment and wrestling go hand in hand. But when you throw a musical number on Broadway on this shit, and then at the end, supposedly it was all a dream. Like what the? F- they're getting into impact territory. No, they know. Angel, you know like, what this reminds me of? <laughs> Remember when? It, 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 it better know. Um, early WWF when they did the na 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 and fucking Vince McMahon and all the 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 fucking wrestlers were singing and shit. Oh, At we're least all they all singing with guitars and shit. Yeah, exactly. The award, the Slammy Awards, was fucking yeah, yeah. on the bass. Oh, 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 what was it, Vince McMahon? Stand back, stand back. <laughs> Stand back. But at least that was, they know they were goofy yeah, for yeah. a variety show. This is not a variety show. This is show. not a variety show. This is a show. wrestling show. Ugh. This was, like I said, embarrassing. Angel, please tell me you looked at this and said this is AEW's dog shit because of this. Please. I I, I didn't watch the episode, but I saw this uh, little... Uh, Dinner, dinner thing that they did, <laughs> and I'm just theater. watching. I'm like, I can't believe they did some stupid shit like this. This is fucking disgusting. It's, by the way, it's horrible. Jer- it's by like way, Chris Jericho says this is the greatest moment in his AEW career. He also said that about the Orange Cassidy match, which was shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Chris Jericho is gonna say anything, uh, nothing bad about AEW. That, the, that paycheck is, is really good. And you make and you make a good point there, Angel, because I have to say. Uh, can I be disappointed in Tony Khan because he never says no to anything? Sure. Can I be disappointed at MJF for even agreeing to this? Sure. But I'm I am extremely I am the most disappointed in Chris Jericho for for going through with this. I think that he knows better, and the fact that lately he thinks that because he's so respected, that anything he creates can be put on television. It, it's doing a disservice to to weekly television. No, 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 no. Don't worry. Next week. It's gonna be Jericho, MJF in the pool, and they're gonna do fucking um, water ballet. That's gonna be the next shit. Oh great! They're gonna have the whole fucking montage. Oh, it's gonna no, be it's gonna water be, fountains. No, they're, gonna, they're gonna ride a bike like um, Kermit and Miss Piggy in the Muppet oh, movie. Oh, the tandem bikes! They're gonna be on the yeah, tandem yeah, bikes. Yeah, like, oh, this gets a five thumbs down. AEW, you were doing so good for me throughout the night, and then you ruined it with this. The worst segment in wrestling history. Uh, for anybody else, no, uh, Melter actually came on his own face after he saw this. He jizzed. Yeah, he jizzed on his own face after he saw this. Yeah. So other than that, 
Oh, let's go to NXT real quickly. God. Uh, yeah. I, so by, by the way, please go to Jim Cornette and watch his reaction to this shit because he goes off on that. <laughs> they, they already. This is the fastest I've ever seen him put up the clip. You know they do yeah, the clips yeah, on yeah. YouTube? That was this is the fastest I've ever seen this clip go up. He has a 20-minute fucking berating on YouTube right now just on that segment alone. Absolutely. So let's go straight to NXT. <laughs> we, 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 <laughs> NXT, we had um, Kushida versus Tommaso Ciampa versus Velveteen Dream to start off the night. It was a high-octane match. Yes, Loved I said it. octane. Loved Loved it. Loved it from beginning to end. Ben, did you watch NXT? No. Are you fucking wanker? Right, so you you know what? fucking wanker. Mute, you. Him, mute him. No, I'm kidding. You fucking wanker. Angel, you, you definitely you enjoyed this one, right? Oh, yeah. I definitely uh, checked in on NXT. Kushida, they need to to continue with, with his uh, his push, man. He He's really good. He looks really good, man. They, all three of these guys. Uh, if I'm a team, man. Yeah, but, you know, Kushida. I love Kushida right now. Tommaso Ciampa is an absolute star every day of the week. It's crazy. Yeah. Three men were really strong in their roles this week, but I will say Kushida kills with the aggressive character. And um, Kushida pins Ciampa at the end. Um, yeah. Now Kushida's in a position where he could soon enter a title position. I'm going to go with North American. Um, my prediction, I think Gargano wins at Halloween Havoc, and we're going to have Gargano and Kushida in a feud. Well, I like the, I like the, um, I like the idea of um, making all these three guys in this match not look weak at all. Even they Velveteen all was strong. over as fuck in yeah. this one. They all look strong. But Tommaso looks excellent. He looks yes. phenomenal. Oh, man, I'm all about it. He still looks like he... It does. He, you know, although he's fucking a, a a stack of fucking matchsticks that could be broken at any time, because <laughs> you know he's injury prone. But yes, he, he still looks like he got. He still could stay in top physical condition and still can go. And to be, it's funny because he's not that old. He looks old, but he's not that old. No, he's not. Yeah, he could still and he still goes well. So like I said, Kushida picks up the yeah. win there, and it was a great contest showing off some of their best talent they have today. Up next, we had Ember Moon having her first singles match since returning from her Achilles injury, and she faced Jesse Camilla. And Moon looked pretty good. Uh, it, it was a quick match. It was a quick tune-up match. Um, but what do you think about Moon starting a submission finish? I wanted to hate this because the beginning of the match didn't click well. Right. And then it started picking up steam later on. Once Camille got it into the match a little bit more, she got a little more aggressive. She yep. started getting in tune a little bit. I'm gonna be honest with you. I can't. I don't. I don't. I don't see what everybody sees with Ember Moon. I don't. I don't either. I don't see I don't either. it. I'm. A, I, I. I agree with you on that. I do think that she's okay, but I don't think that she's as good as everyone says she is. Yeah, I think she's a little off. Maybe pace. Ring Rust. Maybe Ring Rust. She's maybe. been out for a while. But she's also been known to be off pace as well. I don't know. It always seems like she's a step behind when it comes to you know the chain wrestling and, and stuff. By the like way, that. her her character screams heel. I don't know why she's a face, but um. No, I think she is. Yeah, but I think she's, she's yeah. yeah. I think yeah, but I think she is getting getting to that 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 area of heel. Really? Because the Kota, now she's gonna face the Kota Kai. Because the Kota Kai attacks right, at the I end of the match. About that, so yeah, I, I mean, I don't think that. yet, but uh, yeah. I think. Um. Uh, listen, yo Ben, what you eating over there? Uh, I'm eating sweets. I'm eating uh, drumstick bars and Vinto bars. <laughs> Damn. Ten, ten P bars. Just keep this body in order. Uh, I fucking wish. You trying to you trying to stay uh, stay awake for Impact when uh, the Baffle Glory comes on? I'll be I'll be awake all night anyway, so it's nothing new for me. All right, I forgot. Yeah, he works overnight like I do. Yeah. Also, this week on NXT, we had Bronson Reed versus Austin Theory. Um, Bronson Reed picks up the win. Uh, Austin Theory says, "Challenge me again." Bronson Reed beats him again, twice in one night, and Austin Theory quits NXT. Red, does this mean Austin Theory to the main roster again? I wanna um I wanna uh, push this to Angel. Angel, what's your thoughts about Austin Theory? Um, I, I know I know Matt is a big fan of Austin Theory. I don't see the big deal about him, honestly. Like, uh, he might be a good talking piece, but I don't know. I don't see too much about him. I think they might push him to the main roster, though. Um, they might swap, maybe chat. Did something with, um, recently. You might see uh, one way to go. Uh, uh, Chad Gable, yeah. A big. Awesome. Well, think about it, Angel. Um, the rumor is running rampant that Andrade is coming back to NXT. So if they do, if they, if they do that, they might bring Austin Theory up and Andrade down. Oh, that that'll be perfect. That that'll be great. I reckon. I, I think I think Austin might be a better fit for the main roster, though. I reckon Austin Theory may go into retribution. That'd be another look too. Yeah, that might work that for makes them. Sense. They might need another guy for there as well. Um, 
I like Austin. I like him a lot. Uh, someone I forgot who it was. They made uh, they made a comparison uh, to Lance Storm, which is a great fucking compliment. I think he still is early on in in, in his in his development, but the kid sells. He knows how to fucking work the the the, the opponent. He knows how to take whatever needs to go his way when it's being dished to him. It's like I said, it's just one of those things that a, 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 a few works here, yep. little job here, a little uh, a little um tweaking there. This might be one of those things that Vince fucking takes him and he's either gonna burn him or he's gonna make him a fucking star. It's gonna be one of the two. And the, and, and the risk is high on that one. Yes. Yeah. Also, we had El Legado del Fantasma face Swerve, Jake Atlas, and Ashante. Um, this match was meant for one reason and one reason only, to introduce Jake Atlas as the new Cruiserweight Champion uh, chip <clears throat> opponent. Jake Atlas looks really good as of late. They're pushing Jake Atlas. He has a, he, he's, work, he's getting most of the offense uh, mm-hmm. here. So to see Jake Atlas versus um, Santos Escobar will be coming soon. Then we had Timothy Thatcher having a live lesson. I know you love that. I marked the fuck out for this. Yeah, I know you love that. This was probably one of my favorite moments of the week in, on any show. Um, Timothy Thatcher has a lesson, which, by the way, um, the person he was sparring with, if no one knows, he was um, at uh, Evolve. He, um, I forgot his gimmick, but he is a, a brand new student in NXT. So for them to be able to use him that quickly shows that they are high on the dude. Um, Thatcher took the demonstration too far and didn't want to post a, a submission. It turned into an impromptu match between Anthony and Thatcher. Thatcher won with ease. A- um, Angel, Ben. Uh, 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 well, Angel's out right now. He's here, 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 here. Amazing, amazing. Red, did you not cream yourself? No, I thought it was a great spot. It wasn't. It wasn't those those um, segments where it kills time and it's like oh, dry. just like when you get the fucking uh, when you get Katniss LeRae and Gargano in those moments. No, this was a a, a segment that made sense. Made sense and. I love the gimmick. I love. I love, I love the the trainer slash uh, yep. protagonist of asshole and, gimmick. I love and it. This is what bothers me with AEW because AEW promised sports like feel. AEW promised legit hardworking gimmicks, and the fact that I'm getting this on NXT. Yeah, because, because what we're getting at AEW is we're coming together like birds of a feather. We. <laughs> We're going together like pages in a book. I'm my shadow. <laughs> <laughs> the theater in me like like the song, but damn, they fucking killed it. Fucking mooks. Gargano and um, Gargano and Cancel Ray have a funny segment practicing spinning a tiny wheel in prepara- preparation for their big wheel spin next week at Halloween Havoc. Drake Maverick gained a little more respect from Killian Dane when he landed on Ever Rise with a chair. Uh, which I am starting to like Maverick and Killian Day together. I'm not okay. super over with them. I thought but... you were going to say you're going to start liking Ever Rise. Fuck no. <laughs> I don't care what Ever Rise does. They will never be, I'll never be a fan of them. I have a better chance of liking Smiley, okay? And, and you know me, I love Smiley now, but you yeah. know me early Smiley. No. Ben is, ben is in lay down mode right now. Ben oh, is no. laid down. He's having the itis. He's getting up, he's getting a sugar, sugar crashing. <laughs> um, Zia Lee. Why was that? But oh. you went. Did you say Smiley? Do you mean Norman Smiley? No, 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 no. no. It's an indie wrestler over it's here. It's an indie wrestler named Smiley that you should take a look at. I'll send you Good links wrestler. to him. You'll I like to, him. I used to hate him, but he's a um, he's he's a he's a luchador type wrestler. But I'll send you links to him. He's actually really good. Um, Zia Lee, uh, Zia Lee still cannot clinch a victory this week, losing to Casey Catanzaro. Um, and as usual, she lashes out afterwards. Afterwards, Raquel Gonzalez destroys all the women involved. And Angel's hi- back. What's up, Angel? And Raquel Gonzalez <laughs> hypes up her match with Rhea Ripley next week. Are you excited for Rhea Ripley and Raquel Gonzalez? Uh, oh, hell yes. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, the monsters two, clash. Two big, burly, sexy... Bits. Yo, Raquel Gonzalez, bro. <laughs> it hit different, Angel? It does. <laughs> what, you, what, you, what you slipping over there? What you got over there? Ah, he got ah the, the the drink of Puerto Rican champs, which is yeah, I just had a patele just now, I had to run out. That's why. <laughs> That's <laughs> so, uh, Brent, what do you think about Rhea and Raquel Gonzalez? Ah, uh, man, please, this is this is um been building up for months. This is a, 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 a if you if you guys are into that kind of a strong woman, um, 
chokehold type of porn. Sounds this like, is, yeah, like this is the shit you gotta watch when you're into that that wrestling. Uh, I gotta tussle you down, and then uh, I'm gonna put you in a chokehold, and then you can suck my tits at the same time. What? This is the kind of wait, wait, wait. What? What was it? What, what, what are you talking about? What kind of uh, FUQ.com, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah, that kind of thing. <laughs> this is this is it. Absolutely, I'm a big fan. Ultimate of this. submission. That's what it's called. Ultimate submission. Oh God. <laughs> And, uh, Look and, it up! Look it up, guys! And finally, on NXT, ladies and gentlemen, we had Breezango versus Denny Burch and Oni Lorcan for the NXT Tag Team Championship. Because during, due to the, due yes. to the, uh, during the night, it seemed as though that someone was taking out Undisputed Era. Yes, Undisputed Era being picked off one by one, and uh, because of that, we needed a replacement team, and that was Denny Burch and Oni Lorcan. And of course, the match was good. I enjoyed the match from the beginning to the end, but at the end. We get a random person in a hoodie um, interfering in the match. And and Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch are your new NXT Tag Team Champions. And it is revealed that their new manager is... Wait for it. Pat McAfee, ladies and gentlemen. Pat McAfee is back in NXT as the manager, whatever the fuck he's going to be. With Oni Lorcan, Danny Birch, they turn heel to end the night. We have new NXT Tag Team Champions. And before Red gives me his thoughts, before you give me your thoughts, Angel, um, even Ben, I know you didn't watch it, but I, this is a really, uh, really um, who done it angle. Um, I think this adds a layer to um, Lorcan and Burst that was needed. I think this makes the tag division look more legit because it was fucking desperate for attention because it was, it's been really bad lately. Um... And we have new NXT Tag Champs. Angel, what do you think about Pat McAfee aligning with these guys? Oh, I love it. Uh, I love it. I think you, I think you, I think you, you jumped on it a few weeks back that uh, Orny and um, Birch, they need a, a talking piece. Yes, and they do. That, that guy, McAfee, will definitely give them that talking piece. It'll give them some sort of credibility as well. Uh, and I think they're going to hold the straps for a little while. It gives uh, a nice feud to go with the Undisputed Era. I think it'll, it's pretty dope. Red, what do you thought about Pat McAfee being announced as a manager? Because I do think, as Angel said, it adds layers to the team, and I think it makes them um, legit. I really do. And it also intertwines with the fact that Pat McAfee hates Undisputed Era. It works. He, he, hates, yeah. he hates Undisputed Era. He's a fucking natural uh, piece of shit. It comes off very much easy for, for him to do so. And not only is it a good mouthpiece, on NXT is also great for his show. So yes, it is. There's a whole lot of building with that all around. So that ends NXT, guys. I thought NXT was great through and through. Let's go to SmackDown quickly as we had the Kevin Owens show, um, of course, hosted by Daniel, uh, like Kevin Owens. And really? Kevin Owens show hosted by Kevin Owens? Who would have thought? Who would have knew? Who would have thought? Um, and Daniel Bryan comes out saying that he wants the Intercontinental Championship being defended every week. He he, he says his vision for uh, SmackDown, which on Talking Smack, it was announced that he said this is his last run as a, as a wrestler. Oh, yeah. I'll put the stuff for you. I'll put it away. <laughs> and that's all. Good dad angel. Good dad doing good angel. Dad stuff. Doing good dad stuff. <laughs> we do. We need a bit where like Angel just does good things. For hey, right. <laughs> um, With a lucha mask on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Daniel Bryan announces that this is his last run as a wrestler. Um, after having his second kid, he realized, you know what? Um, one more, one more run, and I'm done. Uh, he said that on um, on Talking Smack this week. And uh, Kevin Owens pitches the idea of being a tag team, uh, saying that they are that they, they would be great together. We get a call on Skype. Who the fuck's calling? Well, I'll make a call. I'm not uh, taking that. <laughs> I'm going to shut that shut, bitch down. Yeah, shut that shit down. <laughs> um, of course, Kevin Owens and Daniel Bryan are talking about how they are a tag team, but then the Street Profits come out, Dolph Ziggler and Rude, Nakamura and Cesaro, basically the SmackDown tag division right there in a nutshell. And we get Daniel Bryan and Kevin Owens and the Street Profits defeating Ziggler, Rude, Nakamura, and Cesaro. Red, do you think that Bryan and Kevin Owens should be a tag team, or do you think Daniel Bryan should go against Sammy? Uh, I think the tag division needs it, Pop. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know. It's it 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 it'll be a cute run, but honestly, it won't last long. Won't last long. But that'll be a good gateway oh, yeah. to turn Kevin heel again. But how long are we gonna see? Uh, yeah. how, how long? How long has Daniel got? Maybe two years left. You know, maybe, to, maybe at two most, years? at most. I think it's he's that, yeah. in the at most. Yeah. So, do, what do you think, uh, Angel? You answer this question too. What do you, what do you think? Because, like, because Daniel Bryan, now we know it's his last run. We gotta, we gotta strategize his last couple of um, good feuds together before he calls it quits. I mean, and I think, I think, I think, he, I don't know about the tag team, but 
if you want to make Kevin Owens that heel again, needed, then you put him with Daniel Bryan. Absolutely, because Daniel Bryan, he's that big. He's a baby face through and through. So Kevin Owens could get that heat back, and he needs it. I don't like face Kevin Owens. Face I hate Kev- it. Face Kevin Owens is a face Randy Owens for me. They don't mean shit, and they're terrible. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that they should pull the pull what they did a few years ago. Kevin Owens, Shane McMahon, be a tag team, and then fucking make Kevin turn on Daniel. Period. What do you well, think? Well, Kevin's back on Kevin's back on, on SmackDown, and uh, who guess who else is there as well? Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn. So, so that's coming soon. So what else? What does that mean? You know. Uh, Either he's, we got a we got an angle working with each other or against each other coming down the line. So we'll see. But after the match, we had Brian um, and Zayn having an interaction. Zayn saying that as long as he's champion, he will continue to do things his own way. I think that's a good plant to be uh, a good seed to be planted there. Um, possibly getting those two in a feud. Which come on, Sami Zayn and Daniel, that's amazing. You can't go wrong either way, in my opinion. Up next, we had Bianca Belair defeating Zelina Vega in a quick quick um, squash match after hitting the KOD. Showcase, am I the only person who's noticing they're putting all of their editing and graphical work on Bianca Belair? Of course. They are going to push this woman to the moon. Uh, Angel, you gotta be a fan of Bianca. Well, he stepped out for a minute, but Ben, uh, do you like Bianca Belair? Um, I prefer Zelina. Really? Oh, to look, to look at. To look oh, at. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fucking horn dog. Yeah, I'm horn dog. Uh, uh, but but yeah. but but they're doing the Mister. They're, they're pulling the Mister. Perfect with her. Yeah, they're giving her the Mister. Perfect. And I think once Vince saw, oh, her gimmicks, EST, strongest, fastest. That is the money right there, son. You know how much merchandise you could get from her with the EST shit? Yeah. That is going to be money. She's going to be the champion in, in the next year, and she's built for fucking greatness. Um, I think best acquisition for SmackDown this draft. Mm. After that, we had Lars Sullivan versus Shorty G. Uh, Lars Sullivan, of course, squashes him. But at the end, Shorty G says he quits. And um, it's not what we thought. He doesn't quit in general. He quits being Shorty G and and being a smiling punching bag. He switches his name back to Chad Gable and says that he will prove to everyone why he was an Olympic champion. And uh, and and he's turned heel, Red. I know you, you texted me. You called me how happy you were about I this. I said, thank goodness it's over with this stupid ass... Shorty G nonsense. Somebody fucking in the back said, "Listen, this is done. It's over. This, this, this is just. We almost we're, we're almost killing this kid's career, man. It's it over. was close. Yeah, it was real close. It was on the fucking respirator, dog. So are we have so so. Do you think Sh- Chad Gable could be <laughs> building up for maybe a um a good couple of feuds and then maybe the mid card? And I think I think mid card, and I also think they might pair him up. And a uh, little bit mentioned, he actually would actually would work well with Drew Gulick. Yes, it would, but that actually would work pretty well. Yeah, uh, that's a good team. Uh, which Drew Gulak's on Raw though, unfortunately. But yeah. but remember, he's not he's not signed to any, any. Yeah, he's a free agent. He's a free agent. So you so don't know. You, you might see know. him on Raw. Um, we throughout the entire night we go through Law and Otis, which was <laughs> the courtroom segments were fucking amazing this week. I don't care. <gasps> you're 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 hypocritical. You said Chris Jericho and MJF shit wasn't funny. Yeah, no, but see, this actually mattered because it's a part of a storyline. That other shit. It was fucking a train wreck. Um, JBL being the court judge, it, it just brings me back to 2005 Raw where they did sketchy shit like this. Um, <laughs> of course, at the end, which by the way, I love the dum dum yeah. sound. One time I did it randomly, and like everyone's looking around the room, like what the fuck, who, 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 where, that, where that noise come from? Uh, um, of course, um, Ron Simmons was the security guard for for JBL. The, the bailiff. The bailiff. <laughs> um, the Miz bribes JBL with a shitload of money, and it is announced that at Hell in a Cell it'll be Miz and Otis. The winner gets the briefcase red. What do you thought about um, the the Law and Otis segments compared to Chris Jericho and MJF? Because I know people are gonna give a shit first for agreeing. Nah, with this it's and- apples and oranges because because actually it, it's a, it's a silly it's a silly premise, but it's something that carried along during the show where. This fucking the the, the dance book. segment was come on. <laughs> I mean come on. It's like fucking Jerry Jerry Lewis and fucking Dean Martin. What the fuck? As like, as compared to a, just a running skit during the show, and it didn't take long. No, it didn't. Uh. It did not. So I thought that was a good a good a good funny moment there. I laughed multiple times during that segment, and then finally, um, two more things on SmackDown. We had um, Rollins and Murphy stole the night. 
You think so? I know so. That match yeah. was fucking great. Yeah. That match was fucking great. Uh, am I surprised? No, because they're both great competitors. Uh, Seth Rollins defeats Murphy um, after the curb stomp. Very long match, though, I will say. It was way too long, um, but it had great uh, momentum swings. Um, Aaliyah Mysterio at the end comes uh, out to save um, um, Murphy from getting hit by a kendo stick. Um, Mur- uh, r- um, the Mysterio family, besides her, refused to help him out. And then uh, Rollins um, gets blindsided by Mysterio and gets chased off. Ray, what do you think about this segment? What do you think about the continuation of this story? People don't like it, but I think it's paying off to a story of Murphy eventually getting trusted with the Mysterio family just to betray them. I'm not with the telenovela. Angel, this is something that we see our grandparents or our, or our parents watched back in the fucking couple of years ago. It's it's just... Definitely is. Oh, it's... it's and I, th- and I think somebody's really piggybacking on that shit, too. That they really piggybacking on that old school they, And then they, they brought it over to Fox, so, you know, <laughs> they know the Spanish people are watching. Exactly. They know the Spanish people are yeah. watching on Fox. So. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> so that was, the, that was that. And then, finally, we had Roman Reigns laying out the consequences for U- the Usos, which, great um, tactic here. We had Jimmy... Uh, not Jay, go into his uh, into Roman Reigns' corridors, pretending to be Jay. Um, Jay backsides him. They get into a little bit of a squabble. They get into a fucking fight, blah, blah, blah. But then the main thing here was Roman Reigns announcing that if... Um, well, he grabbed the mic and finally laid out the consequences for their, for their I Quit match. If Reigns loses, he is no longer the head of the table. He won't have the belts. So that means he won't be bringing in the, bringing in the checks, checks, which I know you and me agree. Mm-hmm. That, that, that storyline where the championship doesn't mean anything more than a paycheck means is awesome. Right. It, it adds realism to it. Uh, but uh, he said that if... Um, um, no, he said, no, he, said he's, he, he is no longer the head of the table, no longer the man in WWE, and said that it's something that he would have to live with. But he wondered if Uso would be able to live with it, um, which led to this. If Reigns wins, Jimmy and Jay and their wives and their children and their grandchildren will all be out of the family and no longer a part of the wrestling dynasty unless they fall in line and acknowledge his place as tribal chief. Um, that ended the night with um, with the consequences being laid out. Uh, guys, what do you thought about this end of the sec- end of the show, I think it is absolutely great storytelling. I think this is the best storytelling I've seen in a long time with WWE. Ben, I mean, it's a cheap, cheap, cheap pop with this family. Ben, but- I know you haven't been watching SmackDown and such, but Roman as a heel, working? Yeah, definitely. Miles better. Definitely. A lot a lot better. I mean, I was never a big fan of Reigns. Um, not for him, because I don't think it's his fault. He got shoved down his throats, but... As a heel, I think it's a I think it's a Heyman move. I think Heyman's pushed this, um, and I think it's working really, really well. I don't like all the your wives, your kids, and all that kind of bullshit, but yeah, the rest of it is is pretty cool. So I, I'm I'm all for it. To be fair, Angel, the tribal chief, he's speaking, and uh, I love it. The storyline, cool. the storyline, the storyline is dope. Uh, at at, at you know, it, it brings the realism, you know, being at their family and whatnot, you know, and it, it fits perfect. Reigns is, is on point with everything that he, he's doing right now as a heel. Um, thank God we finally got him as a heel. Um, and then um, you actually feel sorry for, for the Usos, you know, uh, that, that they're going through this because Roman is that bigger, you know, character or, or persona. So you know, it's a bit. He's like the little, the little dog trying to win that big fight. You know, right? I, I love it. It's cool. To me, it says, listen, if it's gonna get me the team, I've been fucking, I've been booking for WWE 2K series for the longest, which was all the Samoans on one fucking squad. <laughs> then <laughs> whatever way you get me there, just get me there, man. Fuck that. That's all I want. Yeah, but yeah, yeah it's dope. I, like I think it's probably one of the most compelling stories that's going on in wrestling right now. Honestly, agreed. Yeah. Yeah. And and SmackDown. Before we go to the superstars of the week, our superstars of the week. Red, do you want? And you and Ben want to take over Impact quickly? Just a quick rundown of Impact, Ben. I'm sorry, but I got they, God. They got a picture of Kylie Ray, uh, uh, fucking Kylie Ray here. Jesus Christ, on legs. The fucking thick as shit. God damn. Okay. So <laughs> uh on Impact this past week they had a a five way match with Heath, Rhino, Alicia Edwards, cousin Jake, and Hernandez. Why is she involved in stuff again? Ben, why is Alicia Edwards in matches now? It's because she's a part of Johnny Bravo's uh wedding party. Oh. 
she's she's in, she's involved with the dinas and all that kind of shit. So she she's in there anyway. Oh, okay. Well, when it gets the number twenty spot in the call your spot uh gauntlet, <laughs> call your shit, call your shit, call your spot, your shot, whatever the fuck it is. Uh, Hernandez gets that. Wasn't really a good match. It was like a eh, throwaway, whatever the fuck. I'm still, I'm Comedy. still, yeah. Uh, had a big interview with Moose. The guy doesn't get enough credit when it comes to his promo skills. I do like when Moose talks, especially when he is an intense uh, kind of uh, rivalry. I, I, I'm really, um, I, I really believe that he doesn't get the credit that he should. Um, but in time, he'll, he'll, he'll get to it. Also, we have um, Havoc versus Rosemary. Is that me or you over there? No, that's me. Why? Good job, buddy. So, um, Havoc versus Rosemary. Uh, next, please. Um, then yeah, have... but we're going to be getting Father James Mitchell, and I fucking love Father James Mitchell. Yeah, but you know what? You're bringing him back from the dead? I mean, come on. What are we doing here? What are we doing it's here? A long, long, it's a long-running impact story, so it's all right. <laughs> he had uh, Eddie Edwards versus Sammy Callahan with Ken Shamrock. Um, is this a story that it's, it's, wow, what, two, three, four years going, man, and it doesn't get, I don't get tired of it. I don't get tired of seeing Eddie and, and, and um, Sammy go at it. No, nope. Sammy's new music's fucking ace as well, so I don't, like, Sammy Callahan can't do anything wrong. He's doing the out uh, Ali hacker persona better than Ali than Ali did it, so I'm yeah. alright with it. Uh, then we had the uh, six man tag. We had Chris Bay, Raju, and Jordan Grace versus TJP, Willie Mack, and Trey Miguel. You know, once again, not sexist, but if you had Jordan Grace out this match, it'd be great. It'd be better. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's one of those things that you keep trying to force down this feminist shit down my throat. Okay. Whatever, I don't, I don't see it. And finally, uh, you had the Good Brothers versus the North, which was probably the match of the night, in my opinion. Um, I gotta say, you 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 want to see the North just go other places and compete in other promotions, like you wanted NXT to see needs them, like you wanted to see FTR do it. Yep. But I think they're deeply rooted in Ben. You tell me right there. I think they're deeply rooted and and is sharpening their their skills there and impact. What you think? Yeah, the north the north are fucking my, the, my favorite tag team on uh, Impact, and they've got people don't realize they've got a solid fucking stacked uh, tag team division in Impact. Actually, I think they've got everything's pretty pretty solid in Impact tag tag division, the women's division. You know, the main event division as well. But the best thing for me was um, EC3's uh, kidnapping of Jimmy Jacobs and his little promo uh, thing. Right, I forgot promo about that. Thing. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. EC3's fucking mic skills and promo work is incredible in that character as well. Angel, missed opportunity by WWE not using EC3. Yeah, definitely. He's definitely, like like Ben said, he, he has a mouthpiece on him. Um, he, even if you weren't going to use him in the ring properly – you can always use them on the mic anywhere. You can put them anywhere. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> so, uh, as a, this will be the time right now, we, we do our MVP round circle, don't we? Yes, yeah, sir. MVP, the superstars of the week, guys. And uh, let's start off with Angel. Angel, who is your superstar of the week? Um, I got to give it to uh, Kushida over in NXT. Very nice. Why? He's been killing it the last couple of weeks since the, they gave him that more aggressive uh, character. He's been killing it, knocking it out the park. Absolutely. Ben, who you got? I have to give it to Alex Reynolds because the guy nearly died. So <laughs> I'll have to give it to him. Alex Reynolds. Who would have ever heard? I would have never imagined Alex Reynolds. But uh, but sure thing, bro. He, 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 he sacrificed for all of us. Red, he, he is he's the Jesus of of, of the point right now. Yeah, right? <laughs> Jesus, the Jesus. Red, who you got? Uh, this week I have to say I'm going to go with um. I gotta Jericho say, and MJ. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> no, of course, no. I, I'll actually have to go with um uh, Kenny Omega. I want I wow. that's that's the way that you got to bring him back. And that's the way you got to sell him. You got to sell Kenny that way. If you're going to put him as the fucking, the, the big name that he should have been recognized when Ola Lee came in, that's how you do it. Bringing in uh, 
somewhat of the cleaner again, I guess. Absolutely. And for me, I'm going to go with, you know, come on, I'm biased. I got to go with my man. He, didn't, he, he didn't, even, didn't even wrestle this week, but uh, the man showed his shit and his gimmick is pristine. I'm going with Timothy Thatcher. I love that segment. Oh, that, yeah, was that was segment cool. of the week yeah, that, that pe- people crave old school wrestling. Well, let me tell you something. He's the definition of that. He's doing more for the old school like in-ring work than FTR promised they would be. Uh, honestly, uh, I-, I thought it was a great segment. So I'm going to go with Timothy Thatcher. All right, guys. That'll wrap up us here at Get Vocal. Angel, guess what? We're doing something different starting from here on out. We're splitting up the shows. That's right. Every Whoa. episode will be two episodes. You're not gonna get um four uh, hours. You're not gonna get Ben Hur. You're gonna get two <laughs> separate shows. You're gonna get Termoku Tabloid Part One. Get it on Sundays, and you'll also get the Part Two on Wednesdays. So, guys, nice. it's it's it, 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 it's we're spreading it out the market. Ben, keep telling your wrestling friends about us because, and I know they don't listen to podcasts. They're still on records over there, so on vinyl. Just me. I'm just just me. That's on that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks you guys That's our guy Ben And also uh, Good dad Angel For stopping in And guys, guys We have a big conversation With uh, good Hank Flanagan He stops in To talk uh, Video games MMA uh, What's the outlook Of, of, of The uh, uh, Icons in sports And we Did Talk a little Politics Cause We all know Who he's voting for So guys Don't go anywhere Stick around We will return Turnbuckle tabloid. Three, two, one. Turnbuckle Tabloid.